All right. All right. We're ready to go, Mark. Thank you for hopping on uh, this organized productions podcast. Um, my new guest is a special one. Um, he, he doesn't need any introducement. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have a nice conversation with Mark Sargent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for having me, Rob. A, a pleasure. A pleasure to be here. I have not done... I don't know if I've ever... No, no, that's not true. I've done some university uh, uh, things for students in, in the Netherlands. Wow. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what kind of university was that? Do you remember? Dude, I don't... <laughs> I, I probably couldn't pronounce it even if I did have it up in front of me. Uh, but but it's weird. What what happened was when when behind the curve when that Netflix documentary came out, you know, it went everywhere and it was and it was dubbed in a bunch of different languages and it was of course translated in a bunch of different languages. And because of that, it gave students the ability. Like, there's a lot of classes now that it's required viewing like in, in certain science classes for like alternative thinking, they'll do a week on alternative thinking. It's like, Oh yeah, by the way, here's a, a Netflix documentary. Cause there's no profanity yet. There's no nudity, you know, it might as well be rated G uh -huh. um, and, <laughs> and students will watch it. And then when they say, okay, um, we'd like you to do a project on alternative thinking, they'll be like, Oh, I want to talk to one of these flat earthers. And so I get calls from different universities and high schools in different parts of the, in different parts of the world. It's great. Wow. Yeah. So so it, it brings a lot of attention, isn't it? It, it's, it, it's, it's it did. It's a subject it, that... It, even the... Well, come on. It's polarizing. And from a science standpoint, if you're in a science class, you, it doesn't get more interesting than that. I mean, science hmm. is pretty dry. And so when when people say, oh, you know, let's look at alternative thinking. Well, who's, who's the most alternative out there? Oh, flat earthers. Absolutely. Yeah, it, you know, it goes against the bedrocks of, of science. You know, everything in science boils down to the globe and uh yeah. and so we're like nah there's no globe <laughs> it's, you're you're, <laughs> you're you're in a sound stage you know it's shakespeare all the world's a stage you're on it you know it, it was built they they in fact again the the premise for those people that are listening is that uh even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960 right mm. you didn't even know for sure because we didn't have the tech to, you know, we didn't have decent pressurized aircraft or rockets or anything until about 1960. So the question is, if you find out that the world is indeed like a snow globe, right, and you find out in 1960, do you all of a sudden, you know, hit the newspapers and tell people, no, 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 it, it's no. Civil, civilization's already been built. You can't tell people, just come out and say it. So no. it's like, no, let's keep a lid on this for as long as possible until we can yeah. figure out a way to use it to our advantage. Because, you know, information is the, the highest form of currency. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, yeah, so when we figured it out back in 2015, we just started hitting the Internet with it as fast as possible. And uh, here we are eight years later. Yeah. Getting bigger and but bigger. Nothing to be found now. Y you really have to dig deep into YouTube to find Oh, all the good. stuff yeah, that I saw yeah. in 2015 and 16. Yeah, just... once once they figured out how to shadow ban people and and drop, you know, they they figured out in the algorithms to drop the real stuff, the real good stuff, deep deep into the thing. To where when you're running into, I mean, come on, when you're searching for flat Earth, you run into you know mainstream people mm -hmm. or big podcasters or big you know verified YouTube channels and. You know, you'll run into Joe Rogan stuff and Logan Paul stuff and Jimmy Kimmel stuff oh, and you know, yeah. <laughs> late, late night television. You'll run into that first. So we now have told people, it's like, okay, if you like, like when you're looking for me, don't ever look for my YouTube channel. Just type in um, uh, like Flat Earth Mark. I, I don't even, I don't even endorse any of my stuff. I just say, just type in Flat Earth Mark. You'll find me eventually. Well, but, but the good type thing in, is, what I, I put it in your name today at YouTube and yeah. you know what popped up? What? Your new podcast from uh, behind the what was it? Let me see. Strange World. Yeah, it was uploaded one day ago. And I was just listening to it. Was uh, it? Oh, was it an interview? No, Strange World four forty. Let it begin. Ah, yeah, let it begin. The brand new year. Yeah, yeah, and it was two days ago now yep. that it's been uh, two days ago that it's been uploaded. So I found that directly because probably they haven't 
run it through the computers yet. Well, no, so. no, no. You can you can type in flat Earth Mark all day long, but if you just type in flat Earth, right? Oh you, no, no, you, you will never clear. find like uh, you'll be lucky if you find any of the speakers. You know, we we did our big conference in Vegas um, just a few months ago, Flat-tober and Fest. you you'll you'll the what? Flattober. Yeah, Flattoberfest. Yeah. It was so fun. And I was so glad that we got to do it. You know, because for three years, because of the whole pandemic thing, we couldn't do conferences. Um, but not only could we not travel internationally, but uh we couldn't do you couldn't even do venues in the United States. Well, I mean, you could, but like a, a great example, we were supposed to do Flattoberfest in Vegas back in 2020. And the the Vegas places say, Oh, yeah, you can you can do a conference here, but everybody, every one of your people has to wear a mask. And we're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I go, the, the closest you're going to get is people wear masks. They'll get inside the door and they'll put them in a pile and set them on fire. That's about as close as you're going to get. And what about uh, deaf people? So what? They can't read lips down. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just so, it, no, the, no, the last three years have been, I've been a pain in the ass. And uh, I'm glad, but I will say this, you know, our, our group, the, the truth or community at large came through mostly unscathed, uh, you know, almost no, like 90% of my community didn't just didn't buy it. You know, they're like, nope, you know, no shots, no tests, no masks, nothing, nothing. We're just not going to do it. And the, and the only other 10, the 10% that didn't. Uh, you know that that had to they basically had to they were forced they were they were like and i understood the arguments it's like dude if i don't do this i will be homeless in two months and 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 it's like you got to weigh the options it's like okay over here i have guaranteed homeless and on the other side it's like i maybe so, i'll get a weird reaction and i'm and i'm going yeah i i got gotcha. you i i can't make that decision for you so no. and so for the most part we're 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 okay Mm. Right. Yeah. crazy times isn't it if you see what what happened to the world for the last five years yeah it's really crazy and everything uh well, well sometimes i have a basically conversation with some friends or stuff like that and uh we come up with, with some interesting uh topics and they say oh they will never do that i said listen to <laughs> yourself talk like what <laughs> Didn't we say that last last five years? Like, oh, they never do They'll that. They'll never, yeah. There, now, is, there it is. No, now now you can never say never. Um, in fact, never over yet. here, I can't speak what it's like in the Netherlands, but um, over here they got. So we, you know, we have Democrats and Repub- Republicans. We'll we'll call them red team and blue team. You know, mm-hmm. blue team Democrats. They got all of blue team to take the shots, all of them, and maybe 30 percent of red team. So they got 70% of the country and, wow. and the, the red team people were mostly older, you know, and which is, you know, they, they were the, you know, people older than me where, uh, you know, like people like my, my parents to would be, mm-hmm. would be that group, which would be, well, if the government recommends it, they're probably, they probably know more than I do. Therefore I'm going to do it. You know, you, you, the bow to authority thing, which is like, well, you know, come on. It's not like they, <laughs> Not like they're trying to kill us. Like, oh, really? No, no, no. That's 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 silly, <laughs> ridiculous. But but yeah, they got a lot of people, and you know, over the last you know at least the last three years, um, uh, yeah, we've been seeing you you know you you've read it. I mean, in fact, I do on Strange World. I do a section. I've been doing this every I think at least the last two years. I do a section called Lucky Unlucky, which yeah. is. I, t- I talk about adverse reactions. If you don't die from them, you're lucky. And if you, you, you do die, you're unlucky. And it's like, come on, how many, how many blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, how many soccer players have to go down on the field? Just drop mm. to where and I, I don't want to disease. I, yeah. I don't <laughs> want to dwell on this too much, but um, for, for censorship sake, but um, the, the, they've normalized heart attacks. And I mean normalized it over here to where, so, you know, a guy, it doesn't matter how old you are, 20, 20, 25 years old, soccer player, you know, no body fat, running down the field, just boom, just go straight into the turf, dies. And they're like, it's like, well, it happens. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> why, why, why would you say that? It's like, well, it does. It just happens now. And, and, and people have, you know, the power of denial is so strong. You know, that's, mm. that's the, you know, the denial, um, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, you know, five forms of acceptance. I, I watch people and, you know, you'd think it would scare them. 
when they watch, you know, a 20 year old or a 30 year old or whatever. But I mean, I've never up until recently, you know, watching anyone under the age of 60 just drop for no reason. And they're not 300 pounds that, you know, that that should be a big red flag. And, and people are like, oh, yeah. and we continue with the morning news with Sarah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah they just transition and they they mix here. I'll, I'll let me read you something really fast. It's just a like, the it's a mix of terms. They 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 mix them up a little bit. So I'll do them really fast. Medical emergency, player collapsed, player died, died in sleep, cardiac arrest, brain aneurysm, blood clot, heart stopped, died suddenly and unexpectedly, youth died, youth collapsed, athlete collapsed, athlete died, and died after a brief illness. They they randomize those to or cause of death not given. Or um, you know, uh they're very creative by saying that somebody died. Basically. Yeah, or trying, or in, 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 <laughs> trying. yeah, or in some case they just say they don't even they don't even bring it up what happened. They just say such and such died. And you know, then and there's you know, of course, there's the turbo cancer, which just drives me insane, which is I know nobody. So anyone that used to be in remission, uh -huh. they aren't anymore. It, not even close. I have never known anyone that was in remission that got, you know, the jab that now is, it's like, oh yeah, I feel fine. It's like, no, 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 the, it, they're out of remission. You know, the, the cancers come back and it's like, oh, anyway. Oh, it's it, frustrating it, though, right? It because is frustrating. When you, when you, and it's not only about the topics that we're going to uh, discuss today or talk about today, like right. conspiracies, but when you, when you dig in some of the them rabbit holes, it doesn't matter which one. And you, you, for, for, for me, I always say it's my plausible truth, right? So when I think this is nonsense, I dig into some topics and I think, oh, wait a minute, this is more plausible than what they say. Right. If you got these things going with the conspiracies that we're going to talk about, you, you have to be aware what's, what's the narrative that they talk about and how yeah. they bring the news. And you, only can be very skeptical about everything that's put in out. Yeah. It's not like, okay, I'm completely asleep and they tell something and okay, yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, didn't you saw the news, Rob? Or didn't you saw the news, Mark? Yeah. They, they've been telling you what the narrative is or what's happened. Yeah. Well, that's not the story, right? No, no, it re it rarely is. And let, let's get into, I, I, I'm sure you've got a list of conspiracies you want to you talk about. Let's, let's transition over. Because like blue team over here, blue team, they believe everything that the news tells them. There are no conspiracies for blue team. Whatever the news <laughs> says is absolutely true. And even and, and even there's a lot of red team people that don't believe in conspiracies, but there's a lot more red team people that all of a sudden are starting to to figure out that's like, yeah, you know, and, and again, the, the reason why Flat Earth has done so well is one of the reasons is it opens your mind up for all the other conspiracies. Because mm. if you can believe that it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, all the world's a stage and you're just basically living in a giant studio, um, then everything else is possible. Then you all of a sudden revisit everything else you possibly questioned over the years. It's like, well, heck, if they lied about that, then they could <laughs> they could lie about every like you said, it's like, well, they couldn't do, you know, they, they wouldn't do, you know, lie to us about everything. It's like, sure, they would. Sure, they would. Yeah. I mean, come on, I could spend. um Real, real quick, and then we'll we'll get into whatever you want. Um, yeah. Look, I, it's like I try to tell people. I go, look. So there's no, 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 nothing. Fake news doesn't exist, right? There are no conspiracies in business and politics and sports and entertainment and yeah, even science and journalism. I could spend days on each of those topics, and and just rattle them off to you. It's like, look, it, it's it comes down to everybody's got their own wheelhouse which I mm -hmm. love op I love opening up wheelhouses because people say okay that might be a conspiracy but this one's too big for me it's it's outside their comfort zone and so when I finally just hit them with the with the flat earth sledgehammer you know just drop it on them like a train <laughs> just drop it down yeah yeah and they're like ah crap you know it's like, <laughs> like so so everything could be possible but at the same time people hold on to it people have said oh yeah the moon mission it's like yeah the 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 moon mission was a piece of crap but the, you can't tell me the ISS is fake. And it's like, why? <laughs> and, wow. and it's like, whoa, come on, man. You're hanging on by your fingertips on that one. I go, yeah. why? I go, look, if you're going to lie, it, it, it's the rule of crime, right? Where um, if you ever move the, the movie Heat from years ago with um, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino um, yeah. from the 90s, where they shot yeah. one of the guards, one of the bank guards, and then they shot the rest of them. 
And and the reason why why'd you shoot the rest of them? It's like, what? We're going down for murder. So you might as well shoot them all. That way, <laughs> might as well do it all. <laughs> yeah, do it all because that way, you know, we get rid of the witnesses. It's like, look, either way, the punishment's the same. So if you fake the moon mission, everything's gonna be fake. Because if you get caught on the moon mission, you're never gonna be able to convince people that any of it's real, anyways. So no, oh. everything's fake. Every everything's been fake since the beginning, which is why I use. Sorry, last thing before you want to, we, we transition over, which is the spacesuit, mm -hmm. which I love so much. I go, it's, it was one of my, my big things. I go, look, the easiest way to disprove everything space is the spacesuit. Spacesuit does not work. It cannot work. It defies the law of physics, the, the mm -hmm. big one, you know, the pressure of a vacuum. There's nothing. I have never even had a scientist come up with a fictional version of what keeps the spacesuit from exploding. And it's like, well, and, and if the spacesuit is fake, then everything with with a spacesuit is fake. Yeah, Which means it's all fake. And and it's been fake since the 1960s. I go and, and again, whoever came up with the idea was brilliant. Which was over here. I can't compare it to um, Netherlands too much, but over here in schools, you you have certain clubs that are much smaller than others. Like band, very very big, right? Physics yeah. club, really, really small, right? The math club and the physics club, really small, and they're super nerds, right? Mm -hmm. So if all of a sudden you realize it's like, yeah, we'll just film it with soft suits on the moon. Nobody's in the freaking physics club. They'll buy it. Why will they buy it? And and I'll, I'll give you the, the argument where I, where I, when I was over in Sweden, when I asked the, the audience, I go, I go, look, Americans all believe in the moon mission because we're Americans, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's rah, rah, wave the flag. Even, did if it, we, so. even if we know it's a lie, we're going to believe in it because it makes us look good. Why mm -hmm. do you believe that the Americans went to the moon? And they all say the same thing. It's like, well, because it was on television. It was on your news. And the news would never lie about something like that. And it's like, well, the news may not lie, of course, but the feed they were getting from NASA lied. And the news is just going to say, well... It must be real because it's from NASA. And then the people say, well, it must be real because it's from the news. It's like, oh, there you go. Yeah. But, anyway, but, sorry, I rant. This, this, no, no, please keep it. Please do it. This is disorganized productions, right? I, I always true. describe my podcast as um, skipping branches like a squirrel. <laughs> okay. Okay. And especially with these topics, because so many things are coming up. Like, what, what, like you said, with, with NASA, there are so many red flags. If you put them on the moon, probably there will be a red moon outside <laughs> yeah. be because there's so many things. Uh, only from that perspective, if you talk about uh, the, the fake moon landing. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to your podcast that you did with George Hobbs. Yeah. Shout out to uh, uh, Flat Earth uh, Files and uh, the Fact Hunter. I was listening to your podcast on uh, Firmamental from our brothers, uh, Raul uh Claude and uh, and Alex. Oh, cool. And uh, and of course a lot of different other stuff. And um, people are trying to debunk us, right? Sure. So they say basically we are retards, <laughs> and that's the only thing that they can come up with. Yeah. How do you deal with skeptics? Uh, with skeptics, it's very easy for me. I'll, I'll give you a great example. Um, there was a guy in um, New Zealand who was interviewing me. And he put me out in the in the hot sun for like 40 minutes and he was in the shade and I knew what he was doing. Right. He was trying to get me to 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 slip up, you know, to break to break character, you know. And he was mm -hmm. swearing at me and he was insulting me and he was calling all, all sorts of stuff. And all of a sudden he stops. He stops the cameras and he's like, All right, look. He goes, I'm trying, I'm trying to get you to to snap. You're not doing it. Why? What's what's the deal? I go, why? Why would I snap? I go, I'd be a hypocrite. I go, look, five years ago, I was you. Right. If I, if I, so I can't get mad at anyone that, because look, I was one of them. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, when I looked at flat earth back in, in 20, well, back in 2014, uh, I thought it was ridiculous. Of course. I, in fact, I looked at every other conspiracy except for flat earth. That's how bad it was. Right. I was like, <laughs> no, no, I'll look at Bigfoot and Loch Ness monster and Elvis and everything you can think of flat earth. Yeah. No, it's a piece of, and which was why I used that line in the, um, in the first clue where I had friends that told me, that um uh that the royal family of britain were made up of lizard people right and mm -hmm. and 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 i go oh well, well, well you know what i'm into flat earth and they're like get the hell out of here i was like what are you talking <laughs> about you just told me about lizard people right and you're not even and you want to kick me out of the room and um and so no uh, dealing with trolls isn't that bad because you just have to remember it's like everybody started out it's the worst thing about flat earth is the journey once you get to the point where you're in it you, you know mm -hmm. you're in you're like oh yeah i'm in 
you forget the pain and suffering it took to get there. And all of a oh, sudden, yeah. which is why during the holidays, you know, I, I had to do like public service announcements where I tell people, I go, look, I know you're going to want to sit down at the dinner table with your family and they're going to say, so Frank, what have you been doing this year? And I know you're going to want to say it. It's like, you know what I'm into now? Flat earth, right? You, you're going to want to say that. It's like, no, no, you don't. Because you're no, convinced that no. once you get it, you think it's so simple. It's so easy to understand. You can convince your people, your, 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 relatives over over pie right over mm -hmm. ice cream and pie you can't you will not no. it is you will try and you will fail and they will laugh at you and they will call you names and then all of a sudden later they'll be like yeah i probably shouldn't have brought it up i'll, I'll give you one more really quick mm -hmm. uh, there was there's Please a do. solution to this and that is you you lead them into it very very slowly so even before they get to the whole retard stage you saddle up to them the f and you like what we were just talking about. You introduce them like to the American space program. Now, mm -hmm. if you tell them that, uh, hey, I think the, you know, hey, what do you think about the American moon mission? Right. And all of a sudden, you know, they get all teary eyed, you know, and it's like those brave souls. Right. And a single tear, you know, rolls down their face and, and falls off and turns into a bald eagle and flies away. Then you uh -huh. probably don't. You, you don't want to do it. Um, oh. There was a pastor that, um, you know, because there's a huge contingent of um, biblical people in, in the flat earth community, because if it is a flat earth, well, then it was built by somebody. And even though it may not have God's sig official signature on it, it gets you a lot closer to God than than normal. Mm -hmm. And there was this pastor that did like an eight week series once an hour every week at his at his church. And for the first four, it was called Bis Biblical Cosmology and it's brilliant. First four weeks, I mean, we're talking four weeks. He never even said flat earth, right? He just talked mm -hmm. about biblical cosmology, and you could see he was dancing around the issue and dancing around the issue. And then finally in week five, uh -huh. that's when he brought it up. And and it was such a nice slow rollout that by the time he got there, he goes, yeah, anyone that stayed to week five, oh, he goes, by the time I got him to week eight, they were all in, absolutely all in. Nobody, wow. nobody walked. But he goes, it took that long to slowly bring them into it you just can't walk up to somebody and say you know hey you know what are you been doing I haven't seen you in six years what have you been doing well i just went to a <laughs> flat earth, flat earth lately <laughs> yeah although now that we've been doing it for you know i've been doing this stuff for eight years going on flat, in fact mm. the flat earth clues will be nine years old in um, february uh it, now at least most of the people out there because social media has spread it in so many different avenues Oh yeah, uh, that uh, nobody's surprised anymore. Mm. It's not like not like back in 2015 when when we said flat Earth and then all of a sudden you know people would be like, what, "What are you talking about?" Like Stanton Friedman, the old UFO guy that that died a couple of years ago. He, I, I remember I was doing a debate with him debate, and and he and he stops after 10 minutes in. He goes, "Wait, wait, wait." wait. So flat earth isn't a metaphor for something it's we're, we're talking about like, it's a literal, like it's a literal real thing. And I go, yeah, like it's real. And he goes, well, how does that work? Right. It's like, Oh God, you, he, he literally thought it was just like a, like a concept, you know, that was, that was just in symbolism. It's like, no, mm, mm. no a real thing. Anyway. Sorry. So that's how, that's how I deal with the trolls, which is I, it's mostly it's empathy. It's like, look, I, I can't get mad at you. You can yell and scream all you want. Uh, I go, but you're going to get... Hell, there was a guy last night, for example. Here's my phone. Um, yeah. That got blue screened out. There was a guy... I, I, I It happens because I put my phone number out there. There was a guy that I could tell got into Flat Earth for the first time last night at about midnight East Coast time. He must have called my phone 15 times and I and, and left probably <laughs> six messages, right? And okay. you could tell. And, and I, I know he was half and you know drunk, right? But but I could tell, you know, he was like he was already rattling in his head. And it's like, that's all you need to do is you just mm. give, the, give the person the concept. You walk away. You don't press them on. It. It's like, why don't you believe? Why don't you understand? You don't do that. You just no, no, no. head and let them go on their way. Because when it happens, when that ticking time bomb finally goes off in their head. It's like a seed. It, it has it to sprout one one day. The sun is going to shine on it and then sprout. And then yeah. it's just like, hey, wait a minute. Did I plan it that? Yeah. No. It took me what nine. What country is going to be there? <laughs> yeah. It took me nine months. And I was way more stubborn than most people. And to where, again, where I woke up, you know, February of, of 2015. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. at my keyboard just going, there's no way. 
there's no way I, I'm actually considering doing this, right? Actually making a series of videos. There's, am I actually going to do this? Because this is this is a terrible idea, right? <laughs> How did you think? Uh, what was your journey to it? Oh, that, my journey was 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 painful and awful because what what I started because I was a big I, look. If if it could happen to me, that's how I know how powerful it was. It could happen to everybody. Not only was I a huge map guy, my my walls were covered in world maps, satellite mm -hmm. imagery, loved world maps. I used to collect, literally collect antique globes. I had antique globe bookends. I used to buy them off eBay and take the spindle off them. I had wonderful displays. I thought the globe was a wonderful icon. And so when I got into it, you know, I, I like most people, I leaned on NASA. It's like, mm -hmm. well, NASA will show me the way. NASA will dig me out of this hole. And you think uh -huh. you, you you open up the doors to the to the NASA. See, I got a phone call just now. Nope. Uh, the God, drunk guy, probably. I think it's that same guy. <laughs> I wonder if he's sobered up. Oh, anyway. So, oh, no, no, I, I know who that is. I, that's a guy I'll call later. So, um. So you open up the doors and and you see tons of boxes, metaphorically, uh, marked NASA, right? Huge cardboard boxes everywhere. And it's like, well, this, I'll be able to punch through this. And you start opening every box and they're just, just nothing but a few pieces of packing popcorn. It's all empty. It's all nothing. Uh -huh. There's nothing there to lean nothing on. Box. And it's like, it's like <laughs> what? How is this possible? By the time you're done, you're just, you're standing in a bunch of empty cardboard boxes. It's like, so, but it's all, but it looks good when you first open the room. It's like, yeah, NASA has all this evidence. NASA is all this proof. And it's like, nope, they were the ones that were set up to, to protect this thing back in the day. And, and it was brilliant. All you needed was time and money, a lot of money. And, uh, and, and, but their, but their showmanship, their production value wasn't very good. It didn't stand the test mm. of time. They made huge mistakes um, right off the bat. I mean, you know, hiring, the the photography team that supposedly took his shots on the moon way too good they knew they, yeah good photography team knew a lot about photography knew nothing about physics you know so they brought in their own studio lighting which screwed everything up with the shadows uh you know the the the, the spacesuits didn't make sense the ship didn't make sense uh nothing made sense but the the average person you know they look at the visuals it's like oh pretty pictures look the americans but it did not age well and no, uh, to no. where now and they're scared to death to, to do it again, which is why they've been dragging their feet on the Artemis SpaceX project as, as long as possible. You know, because people forget it's like, yeah, you realize the, the last mission, the last manned mission was 1972. That's generations that is, ago. And it's and unbelievable. And nobody else has tried the Russians, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Europeans, none of and the Indian, um, you know, the India. They they never oh, yeah. nobody's nobody's taken a shot at this nobody's even tried to do a manned mission on the moon they're scared to death of doing it in fact i sorry last thing on on this point which is people don't understand i go it production value now because of social media you know we microscope everything every mm -hmm. movie is microscoped if there's a production issue in any movie we catch it right if a coffee yeah, yeah. cup moves from here to here without somebody in the scene doing it, it's like well there's a production mistake right if you came to me with a hundred billion dollars and you said hey we need you to fake the the moon mission right you know to fake another moon mission i'd be like i don't care how much money you have there's no way you'd catch it all you know because it comes down to the weakest link some one little production mistake R real quick um uh, you think it doesn't happen i go look look at the first you know this is public record the first lord of the rings uh fellowship of the ring movie right oh yeah yeah when they were leaving the shire there's a road off in the background where a white car's driving through it. And that made it all the way to the theaters, right? They had to pull. Yeah. They had to like, oh, crap, we got to make another print. Nobody you know? saw that one coming. <laughs> well, yeah, because everyone's staring at the stupid hobbits. And then all of a sudden, somebody in a the theater is like, hey, what's that car doing there? <laughs> and, and it's like, you think of the thousands of people, how many versions of that movie made it through production and nobody saw it none of the hot you That's know none. unbelievable yeah so well it's the you... same if you write something down <clears throat> like one page you you can um control it every single time and when you give it like an essay and when you give it to to your professor or whatever they say right. what's been written here because it makes no sense and you, yeah. you look at it it makes no sense but i right. checked it over and over again and you don't see you don't <laughs> see it Yep, I think there's a there's a website, right? A, a Rotten Tomatoes or something like that, where they put in uh, the 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 great stuff 
that doesn't make sense in movies like somebody shooting on a window and five seconds later the window is still intact yeah oh yeah movie yeah, movie, yeah the, they're called yeah most of the time well go to moviemistakes.com and that's just one of many um but there are tons of transition issues that happen in movies and the reason why it happens is because movies to save money are shot out of sequence they're not shot mm. in chronological order so you have a screenplay and the screenplay reads from point A to point Z. But when you're shooting the movie, it's like, okay, we're going to shoot all the kitchen scenes this week, right? Yeah, and it, yeah. it's like, that means page five, page 20, page 40. You know, we're going to shoot all the kitchen scenes today. And then, but then it gets worse because then the movie's done and you're watching it editing. It's like, ah, oh, we need to do some reshoots. So we 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 got to rebuild the kitchen. And the kitchen's already been torn down. So you have to ask the guys, like, we have to rebuild the kitchen again. And do you think they get it 100% right? No. no 100% No, not. they don't. And so it's like, no. hey, wasn't there a knife rack over there? Well, not anymore. <laughs> because somebody <laughs> forgot it. And But the average audience person doesn't, doesn't catch that. So anyway, go yeah, circle, yeah, circle yeah. back to the moon mission to try to create a, um, a brand new moon mission. And make it look just like Apollo, only better, mm -hmm. and and do it and do do it live. Nightmare, absolute freaking, yeah. absolutely freaking nightmares. So no, no. I have a little no. look. If you ever watch that, you're you're a metal guy, obviously. Do you ever watch the uh, the wonderful video, um, uh, Rammstein living in America? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and the German guys that shot that were they knew what they were doing. They recreated the Apollo color palette. Perfectly. And all they did was they took an, an abandoned factory, this queen, you know, blacked out all the windows, uh -huh. put, put four inches of ash on the ground, did the lander, did the spacesuits absolutely perfect. And the color palette was flawless. Right. And they did that for yep. a fraction of what NASA would have spent. And there was a kind of a wink like they did at the end. Of it's course, like, oh, yes. that was a wink. It's like, oh, no, we could fake the, the moon mission. All we'd have to do is, you know, shoot it with crappy television cameras and it would look identical to yours. Yeah. And, and, and isn't that unbelievable? Isn't unbelievable? Is it is it same with you, Mark? That when you realize that there are some things going on, like conspiracies, that watching a movie isn't like watching a movie because most movies I will I will I will I will, I will, I will never watch them again. Somehow I will, I used to do you know the blockbusters I look like them and action movies, but when I Look at the screen now for five minutes or ten minutes. I see so many things that don't. I can't. I can't look at them anymore. Yeah, yeah. I me me too. For me, for me, it still comes down to now. I can watch space movies, believe it or not. Net still nowadays, but but it, for me, it comes down to the writing. The writing is the the most important thing. It's the story. You know, it's mm. got to have a compelling story. Yes, you can have explosions. Yes, you can have gunfights and car chases and and all that other stuff. But it still comes down to the story and. Um, the other stuff I can I can forgive if the story starts you know if if there's too many plot holes in the story then then I it just I mean like the one of the worst ever which just well like by the way I the thing that got me off Star Wars entirely was um uh the Last Jedi which was you know the the one where Rose you know saved the 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 Finn you know the black guy from the blast at the end and Carrie yeah, I never saw that one. Oh my God! Yeah, never you. ever do it. I never ever do it. It was it was so the character assassinations, the the universe changes using hyperspace as a weapon, all all that crap. It was so horrible that I was like, going, I'm never gonna watch another thing uh, that you guys ever make again. You destroy the universe. Mm. That's how quickly you can do it. You know. Yeah. And anyway, well, I have to I have to tell you that that I, I I was a huge video game player also like you. Yes. Because you basically was getting familiar or getting famous because you won this pinball tournament oh yeah that right? was my first my first taste of fame yeah i, I won a, a world pinball tournament yeah yeah and, and you and you you Digital. end up in, in in developing games right yeah 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 I ended up working for that company and ended up, ended up um becoming a um a video game producer and Anna Ringer, I would go to the uh, uh, the video game conferences like E3 and MacWorld and stuff like that, and I wow. would make I would make the games look better than they were because I was I was good. I, I I'm a I'm a good video game player. I'm just gonna say it. And mm. when you're good, you know a few tricks, kind of like 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 mountain biking or skateboarding. You can do you can make the skateboard do look do a lot more than the average person. The average person is just gonna fall on his face. 
but you can be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like and you know you're doing through all these things it's like yeah see it's easy right and when you're at a conference doing that people are like oh i want to buy that game it looks so cool it's like yeah it's oh nice. cool. yeah but because I, I was i was doing uh well first my introduction of, of, of video games yeah was probably in the in, in the in, in the eighties, where there was only this this little plateau and this ball, and you have to I don't know what the what the game called is. There was this ball, and you have to ping pong or something like that. But brick to... bricks, yeah, that, yeah, that was probably. my first introduction. I think yeah, um, the the official it depend what version. I mean, the official term of that would have been breakout, but there was another better version called Arkanoid, which was so Arkanoid. So cool. Arkanoid was awesome. Arkanoid, and, was the, awesome. and then and then. The, the other two things that I can remember was these uh, 1942 planes that, sure. that you have to, you could only do it from the left to the right. Yep. And there was this battleships coming up and yep. you have to shoot them down. Yeah. And then of course, Street Fighter, you know, ready to rock. And then you have to, to punch the guys. Yeah. And if you, <clears throat> I was then getting my own PC and Wolfenstein return to oh. Castle Wolfenstein. That was, oh. Oh, oh, you got, oh, you did the return to Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was gorgeous. I played that. I played that all the way through multiple times. That was a oh, lot of fun. I still have it on my old computer. Yeah, yeah? that's it's, cool. It's it's still one of the best I ever oh, played. Oh, I, I, you're absolutely right. That was a that was a fantastic game. Love that game. Love the missions. Yeah. Uh, really, really a great game. And did you knew about three years ago or four years ago, they put it out, Wolfenstein, the new world order so blaskowicz was basically in 1942 or something like that yeah where, where this return to castle wolfenstein is came back in 2025 or something like that and the nazis and he's waking up in this new reality and the nazis took over so huh? they won and oh. he has to fight them in in the quite in the future so you have some drones and stuff like going on just like what are you trying to say there? How do well, you get this you know, information? There's been, there was a wonderful series, television series that was done a few years ago, and I'm sure they ripped off the television series called The Man in the High Castle, which which was based on books, which was, yeah, what if Germany did win the war? And people don't get how close they were to winning this, that whole thing. If And, and, and again, that's a whole other conspiracy, which is uh, Pearl Harbor. Which is hmm. if Pearl Harbor isn't attacked by the Japanese, the Americans never enter World War II. And that's it. It's over. People forget. It's like but before the Americans entered World War II, the Germans had it. They had it in the bag as, as the sports, you know, the sports metaphor. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Russia was on fire. They had already killed 25 million. We don't even know how many people died in Russia, but there was a lot. 25 million Russians. England was was target practice for the first cruise missiles. <laughs> Right. That was early NASA stuff, just getting, you know, England. And mm. the, the plan was people forget that they the, the the big plan was that America was supposed to join join up with Germany without a shot being fired because there was a lot of Germans already over here. I know I come from a German family and the, <laughs> like Minnesota and Wisconsin that was just full, still is full of German people. And they were supposed to. So what was going to happen was they were going to win the war. And then we were they were going to fly dual flags over here. And then eventually it was just going to be Germany. And he's like, no, America was was way too rich in resources. It's like, no, 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 no. We want that place absolutely pristine. We don't mm. want anyone to, to do anything. And the Americans back then, before World War, you know, before Pearl Harbor, they didn't want to have anything to do with the war. It's like, that's Europe's problem. That's not yeah, our exactly. problem. And they, they only got involved when, uh, with uh, D-Day. Well, no, no, Pearl Harbor before that. Well, yes, but oh, yeah, well, well, that was a few months before. And well, then, then I was, I was almost actually almost a year. But, but Pearl Harbor, for example, um, uh, was you know that. So what happened was that Germany, if you went back in time and you had to change something, Germany should have never allied with Japan because once they once Japan attacked um, uh, Hawaii then that meant that America was at war with Japan, which meant that America was automatically at war with Germany because they were part of the axes, you know, the, the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and so, and, and seriously, I mean, it was, even though, I mean, yeah, 3000 men died in, in Hawaii. It was such a weird attack, but it was like, Oh yeah, that's it. We're going to war. And, you know, we mobilized everything and that, that turned the tide, but the man in the high castle 
something went wrong there and we didn't, you know, either we got in too late and it didn't really matter. So Germany, so the United States was split where Japan got the West Coast and Germany got most of the East. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, there are many, there's been a number of books written. It's like, do you know the odds of, of us in different timelines, if you believe in different, mm. you know, different timelines? I think Germany won most of the time. Because come on, this this was a country you don't get to say this very often because you know Rome, like the Roman Empire, it took them a while to spread everywhere, right? Yeah. Germany yeah. all of a sudden one woke up one morning and said, Hey, you know what? Let's take on the whole world. I think we can pull it off. <laughs> and they were and, and they, they were doing it off it. quite some. Yeah, I think they the were first they were hammering people. They took they got to France so quick that, that by the time <laughs> Europe even like Europe's heads were spinning, they're like so are we conquered is this over <laughs> is this yeah yeah and it's just like yeah just it, was, of an eye. it was bad and of course all the conspiracies about the um like the time machines that that you you know that germany was building and all their see i mean come on they had weapons that okay there's another conspiracy behind that which is mm -hmm. the only reason that germany even did it was they had their version of roswell but in the 30s where a ship crashed into soft mud dirt and didn't okay. and didn't break up and then the germans like oh we're gonna reverse engineer the hell out of this thing and they <laughs> reverse engineered all this stuff and look what they had i mean they had the the their weaponry was was top notch all across the board oh yeah their tanks were great their planes were i mean they had jets at the end of the end of world war ii um uh, their rifles were better uh it was it was all just incredible but go back on the uh, on the pearl harbor side the conspiracy there is is that the america let Hawaii get hit because they knew they couldn't convince the American America. We'll give the American mothers. Mothers don't like their sons going to fight for things, but they will always fight for revenge. And that is really the, the same with human beings across the board. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book. And I'm sure you've done it to your friends when you yeah, were a kid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Was, you yeah. walk up behind somebody, you hit them in the back of the head. And when they spin around, you point at your best friend. Yeah, you point at that <laughs> guy, right? And, and they always go for it. It's like, yeah. you know, they, they always go after your friend. You can do that on a mass scale, which is, I mean, yeah, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. But who allowed Japan to attack Pearl Harbor? You know, come on, they uh, yeah, uh, attack yeah. out of nowhere on a Sunday morning. Come on, no, no. And, but it's and the same thing that I think. Uh, I sorry to interrupt you, no, but it's the good. same thing that I think about. Um, so the Soviet Union, the, the the Russians, they are the biggest problem for this world. Right. Well, if it wasn't Russia that sent them soldiers into the war to Germany, yeah, there would be nothing left. Oh, from dude, dude. Oh no, I, you're you're preaching to the choir here on this one. I tell people, and I, I'm not I'm not slamming vets, but here's a great example for you. When you look up, you can look up this up all day long. Say how mm -hmm. many Americans died during World War II, and it's four hundred, little little over four hundred thousand, down mm -hmm. to the man, right? It's like four hundred, you know, fifteen thousand, yeah, yeah. two hundred seventy. Don't right? look up to Russians. We, we know it's... exactly how many. You say how many Russians died? We don't know. We can't even round it to the nearest million because That's unbelievable. They wiped out, Germany was wiping out entire regions and they couldn't even count the dead. They're just saying, well, we're pretty sure like 3 million people lived in this region. So they're all and gone. And they're gone. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the best we could even hope for is maybe if they say the estimates are like between 22 and 27 million. And, and you're, and you're saying, well, what's the point? My point is first that it was, that is so for every American that died, 50 Russians died. That's how many people died. It was bad. I mean, there was that one movie with Jude Law. You probably remember that sniper movie. And they weren't kidding. Oh, yeah. They didn't Behind have enough rifles. Yeah, I think so. Was it that one? Could have been. Yeah. Where, yeah when where he was they, lying we, in this pile of dead bodies and he eventually got one one Mauser of a Mosin Ganant. I, I could have all these bosses. I think, I think it, it was. was behind enemy lines. Be, in the beginning of the movie, though, where they, they were sending troops out, they didn't have enough rifles. and But they knew their guys were going to die. So they say, OK, when the guy you're going to follow this guy, you're not even going to have a gun. When he dies, grab his rifle. <laughs> and this oh. and, and they told everybody this. It's And it's happened all the time. So these guys were running out in pairs. It's like because they knew these guys are going to get mowed down. Yeah. Ger Russia, all credit to Russia. Like, oh. look, they they have the respect for me. Well, there's another conspiracy. Here's another conspiracy for you, really quick. One of my favorite ones of all time 
Um, it's a great little story uh, because I think that Russia has been um, the United States secret secret brother in arms for a long time. It goes all the mm. way back to the to the Civil War, which is, you know, our country was founded because we broke away from England. Right. And England tried to take it back. Uh, and it's like the first time they tried to take it back was, of course, 1776. Uh, and, uh, you know, France came in, you know, the, the French Empire was a thing back then. And uh, and basically, France won that war for us, right? And then they sold us America back. And the Statue of Liberty is French. It's like that's their big stamp. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, this was a French thing. And so I'll credit to France, right? So then Britain's like, oh no, we're not done yet. We're gonna try again. So all we have to do is wipe out France. Then we're going back and getting America. So they take out Napoleon, <laughs> right? Napoleon at Waterloo. They take him out, and they say, okay, we're we're coming back for for America. At one point during their one of their probe missions, they burned the White House down they came in through the top that's how they knew they could take us they they came in through canada burned the white house and then they're like oh we got this take care of napoleon we'll come back but things took longer back then so they take care of napoleon oh, yeah. and they come in down through new orleans down through the south through the gulf of mexico and we stop them just got lucky right they the, the britain was weakened enough from the napoleon war that they're like ah we just we just couldn't do it and so um but they're like okay we got one more shot and this is the part that we just wrote out of our history books, which was like Britain figured out we'll infiltrate the southern states, the, the slave states. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll supply them all the weapons. We'll supply the entire Confederate Navy and it'll be the south versus the north. But the south will have the British Navy as their backup. And it'll be it'll be an amazing war. And the, the point was the British Navy will blockade off the north so no immigrants can get into the north. The reason why the north won the war is because all the immigrants that were coming from Europe, <laughs> half of them were going straight into the war. Because, like, we'll give you citizenship. Just put on this, you know, the, the north uniform. <laughs> jacket carry a rifle. run through that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you survive, you're a citizen. And they weren't kidding. And it was like, oh, yeah. So, but but the, the north had this wonderful, the, the story goes like this, that Lincoln wrote, and you probably know European history better than I do. Um, Nicholas the First, I think of Russia, right? He wrote him mm -hmm. and he goes, and it was just a simple request. And he goes, keep Britain out of the war. That's all we want. And Russia contacts Britain and they say, if your ships go in, our ships go in. And it would have been just a knockdown drag. It would have been World War One back in the 1800s. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And England said, ah. Damn it. And they they screw it, you know, and, and we're pretty sure that uh, the assassination attempt, the, the booth thing was fine, you know, was backed by by England just for out of spite. And it's like, yeah, take care of Lincoln. That's the best we can do. And that was it. That was the so, so they went for us uh, three different times. And and you're saying, well, it's a nice story. But is it true? I go, well, isn't it, though? Because right after the war ended. Russia sold us this giant piece of worthless land for no apparent reason, even though we didn't have the money for it. And that is now known as Alaska. Huh. And Alaska, of course, turned out really great because it has oil on it. But, you know, we still have to pay people to go to Alaska to live there. It's it's the only state yes. in the union where if you want to move there, we'll pay you to do it. Because it's just, you know, it, it, it <laughs> might as well. Probably. Well, I mean, it might as well be Siberia. Right. It's like, you know, yeah, nope, nobody yeah. wants to live in Siberia. Nobody wants to live in Alaska, but there's fishing up there. There's oil. There's good jobs. And now it's like, you know, there's wood. Got, there's, there's some wood. There's, <laughs> there's things you can build to your wooden house. Yeah, you could build. No, no. There's some cities up there, but I mean, it's still not. It's not. Yeah. 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 But anyway, it's, it's, it's really, really well, basically wasteland. And you have to know the environment to survive. Oh yeah, without no, no. Shelter, Every, without everybody warmth. lives on the coast. I mean, it's cities, and you know, you you they is, spend. Is that horse is is that Alaska? What? Well, these dead uh, horse Alaska. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I, yeah. Why? I think it is right. There, there are oh few the fa cities. that famous bar. Yeah, I saw it on well Discovery. Right, it connects a lot of people throughout the world. Uh, I think it was about these uh, these gold diggers. You know, they had these big machines that were digging into the sea because there was a lot of gold. Oh yeah, dead. Yeah, here. Well, I think it is Dead Horse, right? Yep, Dead Horse, Alaska is the northernmost. Oh yeah, it's a terrible place. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a it's very. It's 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 pretty much in the Arctic Circle. It's um, how many people even live there? Oh, I think fifteen hundred or something like that. Well, in 1970, the population was 163. Oh, no, it's gone down. 
there's hard there's nobody up there anymore it's no uh, it's just it's just it's a harsh environment yeah it is awful it is i think i think <laughs> average average temperature is like minus 25 yeah i'm not, <laughs> i'm looking summer. at i'm looking at the chart when the chart goes into into purple and blues that you do not see in nature uh yeah negative record low negative 52 yeah it might as well be northern russia it is awful wow so yeah but the point was is like russia sold this to us when we didn't have any money so why would why would we buy this after the civil war it's like because you owe us it's like yeah but all you did was write a letter to to england it's like yeah <laughs> but it was a pretty good letter that was a good one so well, yeah. just a little bit recap yeah. what you said about um you know that the guys were sent to war I know that I think it was Call of Duty, uh, this video game when you come in Stalingrad, and you, you you're in this boat, you know, you're hobbling it through through Stalingrad, and you hear the Stukas coming over you. You come on land, and the only thing you got is is a, is a, a five clip bullet, a yeah. five clip ammo, right? Yeah. So you just like you, just, you look around first time in the game, and when you look back. They, the, the sergeant is standing there with the gun and they yeah. shoot you basically yeah. so okay we only have to head that way but you have nothing and there's well they build it so and and talking about video games yeah we were talking about video games in the in the, in the 80s with this this big pixel things right but if you dig into the video games nowadays i haven't been played for probably one or two years i loved far cry this big land where you can do everything animals attack you the the, the sun is setting the the the, the 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 stars in the sky it's so wow and nowadays the games are just like am i watching a movie yeah or is this is this a game you can say it's a game anymore yeah yeah the the it, there's so much cinematics and they spend so much time on the graphics it, that's one of those nerd things by the way you know coming from game production which is it, that is the cutting edge of video technology, which is they 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 all it's never changed. Which is how good can we make the shadows? How good can we make the particle physics? How good can we make the 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 real physics? Um, mm. The they're 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 absolutely obsessed with it all the time. But it but it pushes them to make stuff now. Where yeah, the games. I mean, going heck, going even back to um, uh, Return to Wolfenstein. The graphics even then i think were absolutely outstanding for oh, for their yeah. for their era um, and i was playing uh, soldier fortune you know that one yeah the first two one uh, like uh, soldier fortune and then double helix yeah they made the weapons with the with the the bullets yeah just like that so when you're shooting with a nine millimeter to somebody's arm he yeah. was just humping and shoot you anyway i'm just like whoa yeah, and that's that's I been know. an argument in in games. For yeah, years, and which Max is... Payne, the of first course. good one when you're shooting on a on a on a can, there was a hole in the can. I love that shit. You know, when something is really realistic, yeah, and when you shoot uh, at a pile that there's a hole in it and stuff like that, yeah, a wooden door, there's some cracks. Far Cry had that also. When you there was an. Uh, I think the second one of the third one was in Africa. And when you shot these were these uh, in Africa, you had this, uh, what was it? It was like, um, like a house, but it, yeah. it was only made for, from some plates. And when you shot at it, when you're standing inside, you could see the sun coming through. Nice. Splinter cell. That one was graphically. Wow. When yeah. it comes to shadows, it, uh, Tom Clancy's, Sure. Splinter Cell. Oh, that, that, that's well. That's me. That's me in the <clears throat> the nineties and the and two thousands of of video gaming. Yeah. The broad broad video gaming and developing video games. You closer to flat Earth. Yes. Explain me why. What do you mean? Why? Oh, the oh well. The the big thing for what? Well, it's not even just okay. I've got. I let me back up just a second. Which is. The reason why I even say flat earth is because the term simulation theory or digital world or virtual world still, even after all this time, does not mean, does not resonate with the general public that much. They just don't get it. Mm. Um, people forget that as of this year, oh, good Lord, the Matrix, I think it's the 25th anniversary of the Matrix. 
Yeah. Yeah. 25th, 25 years ago. Yeah. Cause it was 1999. And, um, wow. it, yeah, I know that is a long you time. Check. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I know the matrix was 1999 cause it was the, 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 the high point in American cinema. And there was no year like that ever. Uh, they, it never got any better after that. It, it plateaued out after, uh, the, the end of the Lord of the Rings, but 1999 was, was the, the high watermark. And, mm. The point was the Matrix. Yeah, people enjoyed the graphics. They enjoyed kind of the story, but they didn't really get it. it when so, we are living in a world where there are things happening around us that only computers can describe, or we're doing, or we're putting in video games. Um, the the of course the one of the most common would be the uh, the double slit experiment which is in physics, in, in, in the computer world, which again, we didn't know what we were doing when we made it, which is called flashlight graphics, which is, um, uh, and I made a video of it and I put it on, on my channel and I used um, GTA as an example, which is wherever you're not, right? So if you're in a game, you're whatever's in front of you, hey, you can see it, it's being rendered perfectly. Behind you, if it's being rendered at all, it's being rendered so poorly that it doesn't make any difference. It's only being completely refined when you spin around and see it. That's why I called flashlight graphics. You might as well huh. be in a room with a flashlight because whatever's behind you is completely black. Now it's processing the possibilities of what might be happening behind you, but until uh -huh. you look at it, it's not going to draw it. And you're saying, okay, what's the point? I go, you, you remember what in school here, we, 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 there was a question posed to us good God, back in, grade school which is a tree falls in the forest and you're not there to see it doesn't make a sound huh. and people and, and you know back in the 70s in school and 80s like ah, 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 you know you have no idea what that question but now we know which is no no because there's no freaking tree there because the tree isn't rendered yet there's no forest there's nothing there there's nothing to make a sound at all the observer the double slit experiment says that the only the observer gets to see what's going on um, um we we hooked this up with a an electron gun which was they figured out just by accident that when they were firing electrons off in a distance right at a target when the when they turned the camera off it was acting differently it was acting like there was like nothing was happening it was acting like a wave like it was like it was potential and they turned the camera back on and it's like well now it's acting like a particle again and i put that challenge out to physics people all the time i go tell me that's not what you think it is because yeah i mean you could use, use the word magic or you could use the word the you know some sort of virtual reality hmm. which is what we do uh you again i'll use the game reference for you which is you see a mountain off in the distance we'll use wolfenstein just for the heck of it right you mm -hmm. see a mountain off in the distance because wolfenstein is very linear linear there's some places yeah. you can't go now you can see the mountain but you know your character is never going to get there right the question is do you draw anything on the other side of that mountain no why would you no the waste makes of resources no sense. yeah it makes no sense the the game's never gonna lie you're never going to get there so why would you ever draw it? In fact, it's permanently never going to draw. It's you might as well be in an old Western movie set where there's only the front of the shops and behind the shops there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, behind us nothing. There's yeah, nothing probably there. Probably the catering. <laughs> so the, the question is, why is that happening here, right? Hmm. Why why is what we do in video games happening in the real world? Uh, and and this was actually touched on. This is not a new concept. This was touched on wow. in um, uh, a movie. Uh, called The 13th Floor from 1998, which was based on a German movie from the 1970s, what the Germans were thinking, I have no idea, called World on a Wire, which was based on a 1960s book called Simulacron 3, which was, a, once a civilization got to a certain point where they were creating their own sim simulations, remember back, this was, book was written in the 60s when there were no uh -huh. When you got to a point, and you'll get this, you, you'll absolutely get this, when, because we're trying now, and we're not going to be allowed to do it. It's just, it's just part of the rules of this world, I guarantee it, which is mm. if you got to the point where you could actually jump in like the Matrix into a virtual world, when you came out of it, how would you know you came out of it? Meaning, who's to say that you're not in a which was the whole concept of the 13th floor which was the scientist that created the the simulation he's going no he's going no he's going forget about the simulation whatever the rules are in the sim whatever the thing to prove that you were in a simulation try it here and see what happens and it worked huh. 
And so all of a sudden it's like, oh crap, you know, and this was touched on in the Star Trek episode, um, Next Generation, uh, where, you know, a simulation inside a simulation. And then you're, again, because, and the reason why it wouldn't be allowed here, why why I don't think GTA is ever going to become a, something you could plug into, mm -hmm. is because once that happens, this world that you and I are talking on becomes mm -hmm. worthless. It becomes meaningless. Because at that yeah. point, um, in fact, I'll, I'll give you a last, uh, I know I'm, I'm all over the place here, but yeah, uh, that's, that, that's, that's what I like. <laughs> all right. There, there was a, there's a wonderful comic strip, uh, illustrator, uh, guy, I think it was Scott Adams who made the, the comic strip Dilbert back in the day. And it was called Dilbert and Dogbert. It was very tech oriented. And he wrote the forward to this book that I read. And he goes, the last invention we'll ever make is the holodeck from Star Trek, right? From next generation. He goes, because once that happens, no one will care about anything else but the holodeck because that's your fantasies becoming real for the mo for, oh. for lack of a better term. He's going, in fact, I, I expanded on that. It's like, yeah, it never made sense to me in, in um, Star Trek that the holodecks were always available. There were never lines to get into the freaking holodeck. Those things should have been booked. Remember, this was like a submarine right out in space. Those things should have been re reserved for months in advance. And it was like, no, no, let's just go down to the holodeck. I'm sure there'll be one open. It's like, why? Why would it be open? You can do yeah. anything in the holodeck. So, uh, but anyway, back, back to this, the, um, the, the virtual world, do what, sorry, circle back, which is the reason I use flat earth as, as the original term is mm -hmm. because all simulations are made on a flat earth, meaning we don't, the, the programmers don't build in curvature because who's going to notice whether the curvature is there or not. Huh. The average player isn't going to know, or would they even care? In fact, it's programming wise, it's way, way harder. You're going to try to program it in eight, eight inches per mile per mile. No, no. So when you look off in the distance off the beach in GTA or wherever, the horizon's always absolutely perfectly flat. And in okay. fact, we had, we had to build in weather effects because remember in technically in a virtual world, it's a vacuum. There's no atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There's no air. There's no oxygen or carbon. So when you look off into the distance, you see forever. Basically, you see all the way to the horizon line. So they had to build in clouds and fog and rain and crap yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And because of that, they um, uh, they 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 tried to again. They tried to simulate where where we are now, but the curvature was never ever built in. So when I say flat Earth, I go, yeah. At the end of the day, GTA and Minecraft and Warcraft and everything, they're tabletop flat. Oh, I mean, yeah, they're mountains and stuff and valleys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, edges, exactly. But the edges line up. In fact, huh. um, Minecraft is, is such a great example of that because it's so overly square. <laughs> everything's just, yeah, everything's square. absolutely square. And when you back out and back out, it's just square and square and square. So when um, uh, so yeah, when when you look at like um, uh, and I don't want to get into the biblical stuff necessarily so much, but at the very end, engineering is all about r right angles, right? Even computers, yeah. you know that you know this. Computers can't draw circles; they can only draw something that looks like a circle with squares they all they do is make the squares. oh remember? my god i know right true true i true. once was with a sniper rifle and i think it, I, I don't know the game but but if you take a sniper rifle and you put it on a sun or or at the moon in the game yeah you you see only see the squares pixels. yeah well, I mean, it goes all the way back. That's why Minecraft bugged me so much, by the way. I do not think it's a game. I hate Minecraft. Because it's like, look, you go forward. You make the resolution better. You don't make it worse. And yet all the kids were like, <laughs> you the make kids are like, this is perfect squares. Yeah, that's all squares. It's all blocks. And and by the way, if I ever get to go back in time, I'm just going to go to uh, like the execs at Lego. Uh -huh. And I'm going to say, yeah, you contact this guy and you give him a truckload of money and you buy him out. And you will have merchandising rights forever because this thing oh, absolutely man. should have been endorsed by Lego. And and yet they didn't. I mean, he stole some of the Lego aspects. And I'm sure some of their attorneys are like, yeah, he's not using blocks technically. So oh. anyway, but yeah, computers can't draw can't draw circles. They can only draw things that look like circles. Because it's yeah, fascinating no. because we put in the data to a computer to get some mathematical mathematics out or stuff like that because we can handle that that stuff yeah but when you say that when you develop a game that you have some boundaries like say yeah where you you make it yourself harder if you make something different yeah like a curve a curve the boundaries so, of any video game are are straight yeah. edges all the way people around. would say 
people would say to us when they when they listen to us talk oh yeah guys but these are video games no no these are basically physics that you put in yeah. to get something to get yeah. something out just like a, a scientist does yeah. or should do and put some data in and get some data out and there are always boundaries with w- what you do and the, and the boundaries from an engineering standpoint are always squared off and like the like in any game for example every game uses when it comes to the sky is called a skybox skybox system uh-huh. which is everything's boxed off now we in that skybox we can create the illusion of anything we want we can we can put planets and you know and stars and everything and there's only so often you can look at that because now as you've said it gets we've gotten very very good at it to where you know like oh, even yeah. in, even with the, your like the early warcraft stuff i'm looking up some of the planets and i'm going wow these are good these are really really good well imagine what a civilization could do um if they had you know higher technology mm. you know how how easy it would be to fool people and it's like well we wouldn't fall for it it's like wouldn't we i go think of um i know you guys don't have amish people over there but you know what amish are like over yeah, here they're, yeah. they're people that don't use western technology at all mm-hmm. right they just build houses by hand and, and stuff like they don't have the internet they do everything basically by nature yeah it might as well be the 1800s you know the mid 1800s mm. here in, in the united states well, if you took one of those those Amish people and you blindfolded them and put them in, you know, a planetarium, you know, and, and then took the took the blindfold off and had him stare at the sky, it's going to mm-hmm. freak him out because he's not knowing he's not going to know. He's looking like, wow, look at the stars. It's like, why is the moon out? What am I looking at? I mean, try to explain. Look, I mean, look what we've done just recently. Try to explain a freaking smartphone to somebody um, even 50, 60 years ago. How do you? Explain yeah, I was, just, that I was just thinking. When you were telling that, look, look at the movies like the fifties and the sixties, yeah, where, where they where were black and white, yeah. And I know that there was something going on with uh, they had this uh, organization that should look if uh, basically if movies could be in uh, eighteen plus time frame, yes or no, or if they could be uh, seen in the cinema. Sure. So they have to, um, well, basically the sex movies were sexual so right. you got emmanuel in the in the, in the, in the late eight 70s i think it late, was late emmanuel. 70s yeah yeah exactly so um and then they saw oh there's a new kind of public that uh that that you know uh, has some harassment and stuff like that going on sexual harassment so they banned it from the cinemas and they sure. put it into another box right but when you look at what they told them then is Oh, violence is no problem because right. you, you hey, hey, stick up punk, and they shot, and you saw some ketchup, and he was, you know, he was dramatically playing a character that is dying. Right. But nowadays, because it's still allowed, you can yeah. blow somebody up and you can see every piece flying around yeah. and stick it to the wall. If you look at Tarantino, hey, how right? So when you see the evolution of like 50 years of television right. movies cinemas and gameplay right that's that's tremendous oh and yeah. i think there are nowadays uh video games where you can buy and advertise on land so basically you walk in this twenty-five thousand square mile land and all, all of a sudden you see disorganized productions podcasting now with mark so right I- right only have to buy for it in but so basically what they're trying to do for, in my opinion is this beautiful world that's created by by, by call it god for for what this yeah. perspective of god is but you know by the creator the, the, this is the things that are real and realistic they say no put your headphones up put your vr glasses up and there is your new world you can right. do whatever you think you, you can play every character that you want right. so if you're really a big guy like 300 pounds and you only drink shit uh, drink uh, uh coca-cola and chips yeah. you can be a healthy guy online you right. know with a six pack yeah so it's all in the mind it's crazy when you absolutely. see how how that goes absolutely so okay i got some questions for you uh, sure. mark sure and i love this conversation already because li- like said i love to skip branches like a squirrel <laughs> <laughs> okay but so I'm can, gonna write it can, can we can we cap it at two hours by the way yeah absolutely okay let's do that so we got 50 minutes uh, yeah or that, okay. that will do that will do perfectly perfect thank you very much for your time mm-hmm. um so my 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 question will be this yeah 
would you did you ever know that when you were bringing up flat earth files uh, flat, flat earth yeah uh, i like to be a critical thinker that that's more in 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 my perspective yeah that that you were getting so famous that that there was going to be so much attention going on about that topic no no not not even close no i mean when and and believe me i did not get try to get into it for fame or money or, or any of that stuff um it was a cry for help more than anything which was i i consider myself a, a fairly clever problem solver i did high level tech support for for software for years and when again i wasn't getting any younger so i this was part of my bucket list it's like all right i'm gonna look at the conspiracy which i swore i would never look at because it's so stupid and as i was looking at it, it's like well again i should be able to solve this and i couldn't solve it and i couldn't solve it and so when i finally got into it when 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 i first released the clues i knew there was something happening because people were contacting me that shouldn't have been you know, like coast to coast and, and other, you know, some fairly big podcasts at the, at the time. And then some people were calling me off the, now put, granted, I put my contact information out there so people could get a hold of me, but that was deliberate because it's like, all right, can you guys solve this? I know the internet as a hive mind is very intelligent, right? Mm -hmm. They, people, they, you ask a, a big group of people, there will be somebody in there, the law of averages that will figure stuff out. And, but for the first six months, I didn't even know if it was going to, it was going to work at all. I didn't know if it was, I mean, great. There were people contacting me, but I wasn't sure until, um, until TFR, uh, there was a network out here that, that wanted to have me do a podcast. And right after that happened, there was a lady out at, um, there was a network out in New York city called true television. Mm -hmm. And she, she goes, look, she goes, and she was ahead of this thing. She absolutely knew she, she knew. And she goes, look, this this is generating so much buzz. It's unique. She goes, but it's but it's an easy term. People know the term, but they don't know the term. She's going, this thing is going to be big. And she she created a, a, a promotional reel that she was going to pitch to her television network. And you, you can imagine, right? You know, it's like, okay, you know, what project is we have? Rebecca, what do you have? She goes, let me tell you what I got. I got flat earth. And she rolls this thing on screen, right? Uh -huh. And afterwards, her her VP goes, Rebecca, can I see you in my office for a minute? Right? They fired her. <laughs> right? Oh, my and they God. did. They fired her because this was back in 2015. It, it, there's like, there's no way you, we are going to put a flat Earth television show. She wanted to do a reality show, and she wanted to do it like they were going to start filming it in 2016, which she, uh -huh. was, she was way ahead of this. But when I knew, okay, my, I, you want to know when I knew? That this thing was going to go was uh -huh. when there was a rolling stone article talking ab about kyrie irving a professional basketball player who had done there were layers to it to where people were reacting to reacting to reacting because it's like wait are we talking about this now and then like everyone started talking about this uh-huh and but the the big thing for me of course was the the documentary which i don't know if you ever watched um, behind the curve behind which, the curves yeah 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 where those again that started out it was it wasn't even that wasn't even supposed to be a thing people don't understand that 99 percent of the movies that are produced in this country in the united states you'll never see they're they're, they're shot you can shoot movies all day long you can you can have a couple million dollars to shoot a movie but unless you have somebody to distribute it a network to put it on no one's going to see it right uh, now, yeah, now you can put right. it out on youtube but how how much traction is it going to get so what happened was they shot the movie. There was just this Hollywood group. There was an offshoot of another Hollywood group. And it was basically, in my opinion, just kids that were, they were doing this as a side project. And they're like, well, it's not going to, it's never going to do anything. It's not like we're going to get into film festivals, right? Because if you uh -huh. don't have a buyer right away, you have to apply to film festivals in different, in different parts of the, the country or internationally. And yeah. every place they submitted, oh my God, they got into so many film festivals constantly they're, they're like a, pe because it was so unique and then they said well it's not like it's gonna sell it's not like we're gonna actually pick up a distributor <laughs> right and immediately like um itunes picked it up and amazon picked it up and, and youtube read and then finally netflix picked it up and i knew that day that when it happened because my email load doubled it, like overnight to where and i was already getting a bunch of emails and all of a sudden it was like i woke up it's like 
what's happening? What the hell? <laughs> Why is there so many emails? And I was, I was, I was asking people, it's like, has something happened yesterday? It's like, oh yeah, it, the the documentary was released on Netflix. I was going, oh wow, I had no idea that Netflix was that popular. You know, huh. it was. I didn't realize that. I knew they were number one, but I didn't know how number one they were. Yeah, or that you that they, that people dig in that topic because right. you got oh, so yeah. many that that too. And it was it, again, it was unique, and the 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 title, even the title, it made people look. I sat in some of the film festivals with audiences, and people felt safe watching it because it looked like you were going to make fun of flat earthers, and they did for the most part. It was yeah, you know, they, yeah. they took they took shots at us, no question. And, totally and agree. The, the producers hated us. The director hated us. You know, was, <laughs> and, and in fact, it got worse for them because they realized by the time they got to the conference that this was a thing, right? And and they didn't know how to spin it. Uh, so because it was supposed to be just a generic human interest space, but they said, "Well, we got to take a we got to take an angle against because this is this was getting too big, and they didn't want us talking to kids." And and the irony there, and I actually wrote one of the producers this year or last year about this was that because it became a Netflix documentary, that meant that it was media sanctioned, which meant that science teachers all over the place now could use that without any repercussions. You know, it's like a, there's a big difference between a YouTube video and a Netflix video. So a uh -huh. science teacher would be like, well, it's Netflix. It's family friendly. There's no bad language. I'm going to have my kids watch it. In my <laughs> Show class. it up. And because of that, I, I lost count of how many classrooms that now I wasn't invited to go to the school itself. It was always a video conference and you wouldn't be dumb uh -huh. enough to, to bring me into the class. But I had tons and tons of kids, more kids watched flat earth content because of the documentary, which was again, funny for me because part of their angle in the documentary was they wanted to make fun of flat earth so that kids wouldn't watch it. Uh -huh. And yeah, it was, and it turned out, it turned out great. So yeah, the, in the end, um, no, I had nobody had it. Nobody had any. No, idea. no, it was going to it was going to generate. But, but was it good? Was it good for uh, for you and for the community to uh, to dig more into these topics that you that you had a more uh, a questionable, Barry, questionable audience that would ask the right questions so you could dig in? I, for example, have uh, on on Monday, I will have David Weiss. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. So, David, so I have David's great, and David, by the way, had should have been in the documentary, and he almost was. You know, he and I met for the first time down at that conference in Raleigh. Uh, wow! And you, and you didn't see him there. He was just getting into it to where he was. You know, he was he was he was there, but he wasn't he wasn't generating a whole bunch of contract. You know, the app wasn't even near being done. Uh, he hadn't he hadn't gotten his routine down. And um, no, but David, David, and I, he, he's great. I, I just, in fact, uh, I had dinner with him at um, uh, uh, the Flat conference. Flattober? At Flattober Fest. It was great. And and I'm hoping, I'm hoping to convince him to actually do a um, a presentation. He hates going up on stage. He hates doing, you know, he loves talking to people on video things. He hates going yeah, up yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't blame him. It's like, no, public speaking is, is definitely not for most people. Um, but I, he's got so much material that I think I could walk him through uh, a Q&A uh, mm. that, he, that he could do. I mean, you'll love it. When you have him on, I'm sure you've had him do stuff. He hits you. The, the reason why he, he does so well is he figured out how to, because initially his first interviews did not go well because he made people angry. You know, people people got <laughs> mad. You know, because he'll, the he'll, belief system because of the yeah the the things that he provided just like it's so contradictional against against our beliefs, right? That offends people, right? It, it does. And to where he can't, I don't know if he did deliberately or just worked out that way um, naturally. Which was what he does is he hits you with so many scientific facts, your facts. That's where he, the thing is. He he's reminding the people. He puts people on their heels because he reminds people of what you're defending. You know, mm. and I'll I'll rattle off just it's like you know how first you don't answer, you know how fast is you're spinning you know on its axis, how fast is it's traveling around the sun, how fast is the solar system flying sideways, how fast is our Milky you know Milky Way galaxy traveling, and it's like none of the people know any of this stuff. It's like okay, mm. why are you defending something that you don't know, right? Exactly. How are you defending you know you don't know the details about your own universe model, so why are you defending it? You don't even know it, and yeah, then all and of a sudden and. And he hits him with so many things. You can see the silence kind of 
you know, he shuts them down to where they're like, <laughs> like the blood is running out. <laughs> yeah. They're like, Oh crap. I don't know anything. I'll again, the, the, um, uh, I'll give you a, a great line, which is um, from George Orwell. You know, the guy that, that wrote 1984. Yeah. He wrote in 1946 in this, um, I can't remember if it was a Gazette newspaper or whatever it was, but he goes, he, he, again, he wasn't a flat earther, but he said, you know, it's interesting. He goes, you go down the street and you ask people how they know the earth is a globe. They'll just say, what are you talking about? It's it's known. It's a known thing that it's a globe. It's like, really? How do you know? And then all of a sudden, again, that look in your face, it's like, then the wheels start grinding because like, wait, it's not that you know. You've been told, told you. you told you were told this and your parents and their parents going all the way back past your family tree for generations and, you know, dozens of generations. So the question is, again, yeah, in 1946, how did everybody know that it was there was a globe? 1946, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. Hmm. So how did you know? Nobody had a spaceship. Nobody had rockets. Nobody. Had, and it's like, well, you know, and, and of course, physicists will say, well, because of math, it's like, OK, so you didn't know. You were just told by people that said they probably knew the question then b becomes if you have the tech to finally see the world as it is like it is in 1960 mm -hmm. when they had the tech and it isn't but you've been <laughs> telling people it is for a long time do you tell the people no no you can't i look i, no, I defend no science. absolutely not you can't i, I totally agree this is like, and it's like, go ahead i think it's very fascinating that when you look at old cultures and old maps and stuff like that yeah i loved i was addicted to ancient uh, uh buildings and 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 monuments and stuff like that on on uh, uh discovery channel sure. um and then you saw all these old cultures that basically draw a flat earth map with uh with a shield and with, with right? a dome above it yeah so how did you came up like we are still don't know maybe we have a theory how the the uh, pyramids and Giza are, are, are been made, but but we we look upon these cultures like wow, that's fascinating. Oh, we, how we, they did you it. have no, we have no idea how the the pyramids. No, are. but but when they say the Earth is flat, oh no, that's that's crap. So once you 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 say okay, it's very astonishing and fascinating how they do it, and we still don't know how. Yeah. But about the the theory that the Earth is flat, no, that's stupid. Yeah, how I can get my. I, I can't wrap my head around that. You know, it's funny. That's that's how my journey basically started when I was when I was making the clues, which was you can go to Google all day or whatever search engines, just type in ancient cosmologies and click on images and just walls and walls and walls. And everybody drew the exact same thing. Of course yeah. they would, because the stars go, you know, over the, the top of us like a, you know, like in a curved in a curved motion. It doesn't take, you know. Hmm it wouldn't take anyone very long to figure out it's like oh well then we could just draw the whole thing as a big as a big snow globe you know yeah, it, they it, navigated through the stars for centuries for dozens of centuries right the vikings the polynesians they they were famous about navigating by stars right so how could you navigate when you're spinning around in this well let's say chaos of speeds right because it's 66039 million blah 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 right. how could you be navigating every single century not like one day but yep. centuries yeah with the same thing on the sky absolutely well uh, yeah that's one it, of it, that was one of my bullet points yeah yeah the the short version of that is the zodiac has never changed no right no. Oh, it's like look the zodiac that people have looked at for a you know hundreds and thousands of years has never changed and, and again the average person would be like so what it's like so you don't know what parallax means you know that there's there here's a star that's ten years light light years away supposedly, and there's one that's a thousand light years away, and mm. no stars are crossing paths. The 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 stars <laughs> never move out of position. And you say, well, what does that mean? It's like, well, it's a problem in that the Earth and the galaxy and the solar system are flying. That's the one that usually throws people, by the way, which is like, oh no, the it's not just that the Earth is spinning around the sun, right? It's the solar system is flying sideways like a like a like a plate at half hmm. a million miles an hour right and that and that is only one of the the other motions which is like that's way way faster than anything else oh by the way that's oh god there's so many different things that go into but yeah, like, yeah, when yeah. You send, like when you send like if we're going to send a probe to jupiter hmm. when it gets to a point between here and jupiter there's no gravity working on it from any side so if it's the plate is flying this way 
right? That probe's gone, right? It's like you're it's like you're yeah. dropping a ball like a golf ball outside of a car window when you're traveling. It's like, oh yeah, that golf ball is gonna stay with you for a couple bounces. It's gone after that. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's just lost in space. But, but that's that's most fascinating for me, Mark, that when you talk about some topics, and it doesn't matter what topic. Yeah. about people their belief system and you know a little bit more or you question the the the, the right uh so, so you question their belief system right they come up with some answers that you can say this doesn't make sense how about this or how about that then they start to think with the normal topic they would say oh that's fascinating or i have to dig into it or tell me more about it when it comes to flat earth it's it's like a no-brainer Oh, no, no, you're no, stupid. No, give me an argument. Give me something to have a dialogue on or a conversation on, but th that's not going to be. That's yeah. not going to be because it, they somehow the system shut off. Like, like well, uh, for, there's there's two reasons for that. One, it's too big uh, for most people. The, the flat earth is too big of a concept. It's something you can't walk away from. It's worldwide. Over here, over here in the United States, we have the best and finest of all conspiracies because we're evil. And we can bury things in the desert. If, if, if you don't want to, like JFK, great example, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't want to think about it, you don't have to think about JFK, right? It's like, but like, remember, like I told you that, that drunk guy that called me like 15 times last night? Uh -huh. When flat earth gets in your head, it's not going away because you can't run away from it, right? It's the whole exactly. world. You know, it's it, once it's stuck in your head, you realize um, um, it's kind of like the, the Neo Matrix thing. If you remember, mm -hmm. the Matrix was like you—you you don't. They don't tell people after a certain age because they start to freaking lose it, you know. And I was actually worried about that when I when I first started talking about this and making this video series. I was like, you know, percentage-wise, there's a percentage of people that get into flat Earth that might absolutely snap. And I was, which leads me into my other thing, which but it never happened, which was great. Turns out when you collapse the universe to a giant studio apartment, mm -hmm. simultaneously you feel more comfortable because it's like, oh. That's a nice apartment. You know, it's if you, yeah, you lose space, but at least you don't have to worry about asteroids hitting you or gamma rays or x-rays or black holes yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. But the other the other thing why people don't get into it um is is the um uh they defer to authority. Um I don't know if you remember the um it's a famous experiment it's done all over the place called the ash experiment. Wait, no, it's, I'm sorry, not the ash. Well, that's one of them. The Milgram experiment. Oh, but Milgram the, with with the electro uh... the electric shocks, yes. Yeah. So yeah. where the, if you guys don't know what the Milgram experiment is, please look it up, which is um, what they figured out. And again, the scientists were absolutely wrong. The scientists thought that, oh, okay, if we put somebody in a room with an electric shock thing and asking somebody in another room questions and they answer wrong, we give them electric shocks. We think that they'll only kill the people with electric shocks, maybe less than 4% of the time. Right? Because, but it turns, turns out- Turns out a little- a little bit higher yeah it turns out that because people defer to authority like as long basically they figured out as long as the guy with the lab coat and the clipboard is standing next to him going nod yeah do it go ahead do it it's part of the experiment you got to do it right <laughs> they killed the guy 60 percent of the time oh 60 wiped him out and and again that works the other way which is you defer to authority if authority scientists nasa whoever tells you it's a globe 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 mm. over and over and over that's burned into your head to where if somebody comes at you, like you were saying, and say, it's not a globe. They were like, oh, how dare you? How dare you? That that person there, yeah, I, like my grandfather worked for NASA, you know, and they wouldn't lie. It's like, well, they would, it, again, they would for your own good, meaning. Mm. But the thing is, go ahead. And now I just want to do a, uh, a quickie, like a half an hour because okay go ahead go i ahead. love it that you're enthusiastic and uh, i want to uh, ask you some questions all right but i, I know be, that there was i will a, be brief uh, i think the, the movie was called the experiment it's been brought out twice in in the late 70s i think and in the late 90s it's basically um volunteers like 50 people volunteers and uh they pinpoint like uh, you are the guard you're a guard you're a guard right oh, so I know the others this one. are prisoners I know this one. And Man. they put some things up to them. And it turns out that the the uh, the prisoners have no rights at all. Nope. But the guards don't have any rights either. But because they are guards and because they're looked at as a higher being yep. or pretend to be a higher being, right. shit comes down the fan really yeah. hard. Yeah. It's a, it's a brilliant movie about how psychology works. 
And yeah. uh, it's the same with the, with this um, Milner, uh, the, Mil the Milgram experiment. Yeah. Milger, and, or, yeah. Or, the, Milgram, or, the, Milgram, or the simpler yeah. version, which would be the Ash experiment, which is um, uh, you've seen it many, many times where like great examples, you put people in an elevator, five people in an elevator, they're all actors, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a six, per you open the elevator door, a person walks in and then the five people change directions. Right. They face uh -huh. a different different wall of the elevator than they should be. Right. And that six person eventually will do the same thing because it's it's basically the, the peer pressure experiment. Wow. Uh, and I saw that with uh, people um, with an experiment that that somebody was rubbing. Yeah. Um, like a restaurant. They were rubbing. it was a big guy, you no know, bigger than normal. Yeah. So everyone was an actor. And these two guys who saw who saw that happening, uh, police came and uh, people would talk. Oh, did this little guy, you know, blah blah blah. And just like, the little guy, this guy was bigger than the rest. So yep. they come, they line them up with the big guy in it, yeah. and everybody is pointing on the little guy. Yeah. And eventually, they break and said, "Well, maybe our perspective was a little bit strange." Right. Well, am am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong? So because of the the the, the narrative of the rest, you would. You would probably put your own belief system to decide. Yep. And th this is a nice word. I think this is one word that we hear a lot in the community uh, perspective. It is right. how you look at things. What What is your belief system based on, so that you can dig in and that you can open your mind for some topics that are maybe very controversial to you, yeah. or maybe are, um, t yeah. To be afraid about the real truth. Right. I think that that's one of the things, right? Yeah. It is. It is. People, yeah, the, the truth can be scary. And I'll use a, a quote from one of our presidents from World War II, um, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He goes, it was an interesting quote. He goes, he goes, only give the people as much truth as they can handle. It's like, yeah, that's about right. We got all sorts of truths that we don't want to tell the people because, well, it's not going to do you any good if we do. <laughs> But but with that comes also that we live now, 2024 already. Yeah. But for I think for the last 30 years, uh, especially with the internet, people. Yeah. Well, 40, 50 years ago, there was a teacher and there was a, a police officer, uh, a mayor, and a doctor in your in your community. Right. And they would the guys with the knowledge. Yeah. If you were sick, you go to the doctor. If you had a problem with the law or something like that, yeah. you go to the police. And the teachers are going to tell you how to live and what to do. Sure. And the, they were authorities. Right. No problem with that. Until we got the internet and you're going to research some st stuff. The, 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 the funniest, no, not the funniest, the fascinating thing about the people I talk nowadays to on this community, but also on more topics that are very controversial yeah. or uh, conspiracy theories, blah, 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 are people are willing to really dig into some things they can't have a PhD for that or a doctor or a, a professor in, 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 in these kind of topics, but they use their, they use their, their brains and their mind to figure th things out instead yes. of no, this is that. And that is how we're going to be. Okay. Let me see what Google says about that. So you dig into Google or in brave or in whatever, and you right. have four or five narratives, four or five, um, um, outcome. And then you make up your own plausible truth. Hey, wait a minute. I think it's more like this or more like that. But nowadays, people tell us, no, you, no, you, you, no, you can't think for yourself. Please yeah. do not because you're, you're going to be a critical thinker. You yeah. don't like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, the but, fact that, that, that YouTube is putting um, official wiki links underneath certain topics. I saw that yesterday. I just like, what the... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, flat, flat Earth was the first one they did it to. Um, January sixth, you know, on hmm. the the insurrection that was done under there. There's at least like a dozen of them now. To where isn't it? Sorry, isn't it crazy that all the topics that you try to to find yeah. that are not there, that it makes you more curious. Why not? It, that, it for me, it is just like yeah. what my dad said: don't smoke because it's very evil. Oh, what's that then? Yeah. Don't drink too much because you're going to be drunk. How is it me to be drunk? <laughs> yeah. They probably should have rethought that, which is there's a great quote, which is human beings love a mystery. 
And by default, if you're putting, it's like, oh no, that's a conspiracy. You shouldn't look at that. You, you know, the average person is like, well, as long as nobody's looking, you know, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna dig into it. Sure. And I've had lots of people that that are curious about that. As what my co-host Karen, you know, it's if you have to write an article about it, if you have to write articles against it, chances mm -hmm. are there's something else going on. Yeah. And so yeah, that's and and that's worked in our favor for a while. Yeah. And the funny thing is, when you think that somebody is a conspiracy terrorist, yeah. it's a conspiracy. Yeah. Blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, no, that's a conspiracy that your belief system is based on. Because I'm just a critical thinker, I just question some things that you don't. Yeah, that's a different thing. I, I, it's not like oh, I'm now the new conspiracy guy. No, no, I like to think and talk about topics that other people are not willing to share some information or to think about. And yeah, just like I said here in the, in, in the Netherlands, there's a new law, and they say basically uh, when you bring out some uh, stuff that we don't like or that's not based on the truth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then it's a conspiracy. So my question is, well, but when I have some facts that your truth isn't the truth and my truth, which is could be considered as a conspiracy, is yeah. the truth, who's do, who's debunking who? <laughs> right, right. Over, over here, we have the media-sanctioned conspiracy. So they're not a conspiracy if the media puts their stamp of approval on it. So yeah. it's a scandal... Anything, anything that that happens that the media is like, oh no, no, this we're going to approve this. It's a scandal unless somebody dies, in which case it's a tragedy. And mm. everything else though is a conspiracy, and it and it drives me nuts. It's like, dude, I could, I could, again, the the line I throw at people all day long over here is, I go resolve these two statements. Everything on CNN is absolutely true, and everything on Fox News is absolutely true. You can't have both because both sides <laughs> say the other one's lying. So, and then you say, well, okay, well, Fox News sucks or CNN sucks. I go, go, fine. There is fake news. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't, you know, once you get them, once you crack the door open, you can, you yeah, can then, kind of wedge your way in after that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mark, yeah. um, I have 10 questions for my podcast guests always. Okay. I'm going to leave them for a little bit, uh, probably for the, for the last couple of minutes, because okay. I got some questions from some listeners and from some, uh, uh, some people around and I have basically two slides of all <laughs> no not this one okay but I'll... slides of uh, some some notifications that are made when i'm listening to the podcast okay and um i'm just gonna ask you some questions a few of my listeners had okay so uh okay um oh, and i see on my on my whiteboard that we didn't cover so many topics that i want to talk about but we can do probably a Part we two. can do it. We can do another one. Yeah. That's fine. So, um, what's your favorite conspiracy, except flat Earth? My favorite conspiracy, other than flat Earth, would be um, Roswell. But okay, plain, plain, think... plain and simple, um, because everybody did everything. There's no plot holes in it. Everything did did what human beings would do, which was. A ship, and I'm not going to say who they were, crashed mm -hmm. in the in the in the in the farmland. The farmer got mad because he thought it was the Air Force. He goes into town to yell. He yells, calls the cops. The cops call the military. The military goes out there. Military has no idea. The commander of the base is so excited because the war is over. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to be a hero. I got a flying saucer." He tells the press. It takes a couple days for Washington D.C. to figure it out. And then by then they call the base back. It's like, dude, you are retracting freaking everything. He's going, we do not need this. And right then the whole flying saucer thing was pulled back. There's a wonderful television movie on it uh, from the 90s called Roswell with Kyle McLaughlin and Martin Sheen. Watch it if you get a chance. It is absolutely brilliant. Um, I love it again because everyone did. And the farmer was paid off. Everyone was paid off. And they told and the and the one and they they used uh, one of the base officers as a uh, as a patsy and basically made him look bad. It's like no, it was a weather balloon, and that's how the origin of the whole thing started. It was great. I, I loved it. I, I loved the the whole how it went down. So no, it was, mm. it's it's fun for me be, because it the it was natural. It felt natural the whole way. It's like yeah, everyone knew. Nobody knew what they had. 
until they did. And by the time they did, they realized, like, oh, crap, we told everybody. And so then they it had was, to... It was this, this mystery that everybody were looked at and everybody was having the answers, but the, 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 the screen players didn't know what happened. No, no, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, the players didn't know. And the only guy that knew for sure was the base commander, and he wanted to be a hero twice. It's like, yeah, he goes... You know, I'm sure he was bored. 1940, what was it, 47? You know, a few years after the war, it's like, mm. it's like, yeah. And he was so excited. I'm sure he, the wind was taken out of his sails when Washington called him. And anyway, next one. Mm. What do you got? Okay. Um, what's your opinion about Ricky Rick Dubay? Because of Eric Dubay, because Eric Dubay. nobody. Is he vanished or something? No, no, like no, that? no. He no, no. In fact, it's the opposite. He's fine. He's doing his thing. Eric and I have never officially talked officially. Um, he got into it a little bit before I did in 2014. Um, his 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 listeners. He's still got like he's pushing 200,000 subs on on YouTube. You could type in mm. Eric DeBay. You'll find him. His chat. His his only problem. He's never been to our conferences. He's never been to meetups. Or he's never been anything like that. He lives in Thailand. He teaches yoga. Um, the The reason he has problems is because he's very anti-Semitic. And because of that, and he mixed it in with flat earth. So he would like do flat, notably. <laughs> Two of the extremes. You know, yeah, exactly. You go flat earth, flat, flat earth video, flat earth video. Adolf Hitler's the greatest guy in the world. Flat earth video, flat earth video. Like, <laughs> what? What the hell? Do and you that's do yoga that? guy. And, and it's not a short video. It's like four hours long with Adolf as the thumbnail. And it's like, dude, wow. what are you doing? And because of oh. that, no producer would touch him. No, and oh. they called. In fact, I tried to reach out through my stuff and like, look, the producers told me to tell you, stop it. Because yeah, yeah, don't do that. It, they're never going to touch you. And how so, about, no, but Eric, sorry. How about Sean Hibbler? I love this guy. He, he, Sean he, Hibbler, he did some, uh, pod... Sean Hibbler makes wonderful stuff. I like Sean Hibbler. I put Sean Hibbler videos on my channel. Yes, he is an Eric Dubay fan, which mm. is why those two, and and which is why Sean still thinks that I work for the government. Okay, great, fantastic. Eric's only been oh, wow. I've been talking to a government puppy. Uh, Who yeah, thought exactly. about that? Oh yeah, yeah. We're watching you right now. <laughs> don't go anywhere after the show is over. No, um, no, no. I was, I was with, with, with uh, uh, two, no, three weeks ago. I was getting a phone call from a Dutch. A mobile number and it this was this uh, indian guy talking to me yeah yeah hello is it rob uh yeah so what do you want and he said uh yeah we caught you uh, with fraud <laughs> so, that's fine he said look up you see the helicopter they're coming for you i said bring them on bring them on man. Nice. Come on, they, bring they, them don't, on. they don't do that in the states but that's a good one i like that oh one. yeah i, I was it, it was so funny so i said to him uh, please have a lot of success doing that but makes yeah, no, no sense but but no, sean is really making no, sean, really good, sean's, good sean's and i love I like, this guy i like sean. On, sorry go ahead. no you're good go he, he was uh on uh firmamental and also on uh flat earth files yeah uh i will have him as a guest also so sean if you're listening please give me a sign but i know that my brother raul from the firmamental is uh, already uh doing his job same as snake shout out to snake uh, Tur turban hat Who's making a, a lot of my guests possible to talk to and to connect to? Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I, it's such a, it's really a, a great journey already. I've been doing this now for three months. Nice. I have some really interesting guests, and and uh, well, I got the, the, the creme de la creme when it yeah. comes to conspiracy and from flat Earth. <laughs> uh, you, Mark, and, no, and David no. on on Monday. Oh, David, David, you'll have a lot of fun with David. He'll be great. Oh, I have a lot of fun with a lot of people. And the, the funny thing is, these are people that are intellectually on the same mind level as I am already. I th does, that doesn't make sense if I say that to people uh, out loud because you think, oh, uh, I'm either retarded one or no, no. It's, it's like when you lift up the veil of some things, some topics, it, something happens to your complete system. Yeah. You you look at the world at with different eyes. You do. I, just like I said, when I look to a movie, I can't look at it. I yeah. never thought the, these Halo uh, uh, video games like pew, 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 never, never was interested in that. Never. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, so what else I have <laughs> this. This is a great question uh, from uh, my, my girl. 
and she is asking, what about the 24 hour sun in Antarctica? That proves that the earth is round because it's only circling like that. Right. What's your, what's your basic thought on that? Uh, basic thought is there's got to be a, and thank you, by the way, for, to her for asking that question, because in my opinion, uh, it is the weakest part of flat earth. Does it kill it? No, because most people don't get it anyway. Most people don't know three-dimensional thinking. And so, mm. yeah, 24-hour sun in the North Pole, easy to do. 24-hour sun in Antarctica, extremely tough to do unless you have more than one light source, unless something else is going on there that we don't know. Um, do I do I think it's Flat Earth Killer? No, not, not, not at all. We've got way too many other bullets in the gun for that. Um, mm. But the only answer I have is there's a, another light source going on there. Because I have talked to photographers that swear, people I trust for the most part, that swear that there's a 24-hour sun uh, in Antarctica. However, we have people in our community that have watched, in fact, David Weiss will tell you, ask him that question next week, that mm. there's some some video footage they're, show, they're showing gaps in the 24-hour mm. recorded sun uh, you know, from our stations down there, which are military. So is there something weird going on down there? Probably. But other I mean, than that, I don't, can't I, figure it out. So no. that's one of the biggest questions also, we, right? We, so, yeah, we don't know. And plus, Antarctica is off limits. So for me, I don't really care that much. No, but, no, no, exactly. But, and, and like you said, you. there are too many other there are too many other uh, things to debunk. Way uh, the too globe. many other. Way, Way too, too many, many other. Yeah. But yeah. but I like it. I mean, thank you. I'm glad I'm glad she's there. She's smart. It's good. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That, that's one of the things, too, because a lot of relationships because of one of these topics could break oh, yeah. because people are on a completely different level or, you know, and uh, I'm very happy. I'm very uh, proud that, uh, that I have her around because she's uh, like me, a critical thinker. And we discuss about some things and we don't always have a answer to our questions, but we still have a dialogue Gotcha, and we still have communication going on. And that's, that's, that's one of the greatest parts. And be before we hopped on a podcast, podcast, we, we, we said to each other, um, well, basically, I don't have any children. And that gives you a lot of time. And one of the favorite things for me, I'm not aging. Yeah. And no, you too, because you. You, you're just like 32. What was it? Who? You. <laughs> me? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You didn't age. You didn't age. Yeah, you don't age. That, well, I mean, not really. Not, not, not like other people. Definitely not like other people. No, different. Completely yeah. different. Yeah different okay we got almost 12 minutes left so okay. i'm gonna take i'm gonna squeeze out full the 12 minutes okay uh did one i got what do you think do you believe in because you talked a little bit on this topic uh, about the biblical about the genesis yeah. we got a firmament yeah. is there a firmament and so yeah what's what's uh on the other After side that or oh, yeah or behind that um for me it would be an unlimited universe and i've said this on a couple different things which is if this world is 99.9 percent .9 conflict meaning it doesn't matter how beautiful how powerful how rich how talented you are there's always something to complain about right you're always in a state of conflict i think that's by design i think that outside of this place is 99.9 .9 unlimited you want to call mm. it heaven shambhala nirvana whatever it is i think it's cyclical I think we spend a short time here and then a long time there. And then we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because I'm a big believer in dualism. You can't appreciate one thing without the other, hot without cold, pain oh. without pleasure, light without darkness, limited versus unlimited. And so I think you can't, heaven means nothing unless you go to a place like this where you're not suffering horribly all the time, but it's like a nagging suffering pretty mm. much all the time. You know, even yeah. if you were a monk hovering three feet above the ground in a Tibetan monastery, you still have to deal with mortality eventually. Even if you get yeah. rid of everything else, conflict will always follow you. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Nice one. Thank you. Okay. What I'm going to do, Mark, is I'm going to put on my 10 fast questions. Okay. Um, I think, and then, then, then we're going to wrap it up. And okay. uh, it, was a, it was a brilliant one. Okay. Do you hear the rain? No, I don't. Oh, I, I can send you some pictures. It's coming down. It's been raining for two weeks now here in the Netherlands, almost constantly, and we're almost drowning. I, I got oh, some no. fields. Really, uh, I got, uh, I put up, <laughs> no, I have this inflatable boat, and maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it up because uh, eventually I have to row to work or something like that because Ooh. it's really, it's really. Let me know. 
Let me know. Yeah, and I'll, next I'll take week, a look there's going to be seven degrees uh, minus. So everything that's now here, we can skate probably on, well, basically on, on the roads because everything is flooded. Gotcha. Okay. So 10 questions okay. for my guests. Okay. For it my guests. Mark, what's your favorite color? Uh, my favorite color is officially green. Uh, and that's only because people said I look good in green. So, um, it, but it was weird because I don't wear green a lot anymore. I wear mostly black. <laughs> but you, I used to wear I used to wear a lot of green. But yeah, that that my favorite color is green. Okay, what's your favorite music? Ooh, electronica, uh, and and by that I mean yeah, I'm a hard rock. I mean I split between hard rock. I mean give, don't get me wrong, I love Iron Maiden and all the. I mean I love the US Festival from back in the day, which was um, heavy metal day, which was Quiet Riot and Ozzy Osbourne, the Scorpions, Judas Priest, Van Halen, all those guys. Those were great. But I'm also a big electronica guy. So um, Orbital, I loved a bunch of their albums from the from the '90s. Um, uh, Lords of Acid, uh, Praga Khan, who did his thing. He's from uh, Belgium. Uh, mm. If you if you ever into him, Praga Khan from he did Pragmatic and um, uh, and and but last but not least, I, I don't want to leave these guys out. You want to listen to a great album? Listen to uh, an album by um, the band was Massive Attack. Oh. And, and the, the the album was called Mezzanine. And I I bring that up because that's the first song that Neo is listening to in his headphones in the first movie. But you don't, it is not on the soundtrack because the soundtrack is very heavy metal. You know, it's Rage Against the Machine and Marilyn Manson. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, and yeah. Deftones and stuff like that. So yeah, there you go. Wow. And and it's I think it's a very, uh, it's a tricky question because music oh, no, no. is... For, oh, for no, a lot of I, people, I mean, so yeah, no, you can I divide you, that you. to, to I'm, genre I'm split. and stuff like that. If, I, if I'm not listening to rock, I'm listening to electronic, and that makes me pretty weird. So Okay. No, but <laughs> somehow I love all these weird people here, yeah, my I fellow humans. Okay, what's your favorite film or series? Ooh, Lord of the Rings, period. Hmm. Um, that is when they, they started shooting that in the late 90s. The the greatest year in the history of movies was 1999. You can look that, look that up on IMDb. The second greatest year in movies was 1984. But Lord of the Rings was the perfect series. And it ended, I think it was, what was it, 2003 was the was Return of the King. And it won, mm -hmm. you know, it, it swept the Academy Awards. And I and because of it, I actually it was the only movie where I actually traveled to another country to see it. So I went to see the Shire in New Zealand because the whole thing was shot in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, most yeah. of it was was shot in the South Island, but the Shire is in the North Island. And it turns out it's the number one tourist attraction in New Zealand. Period. Wow, and a beautiful country it should. Be. Oh, it's a beautiful country, and it's it's a wonderful story. So yeah, Lord of the Rings, the trilogy. Okay, what's your favorite book? My favorite book is an un published works it was one of the last things um uh, Mar mark twain ever wrote called okay. um mysterious stranger and it's a fantastic book uh it's not even that long uh about uh kids in middle uh, like 15th century 16th century europe who uh -huh. meet who meet the devil and this is Mark Twain writing this, right? Okay. Who, who meet the devil and he shows them via things he does to the townspeople, different things. The, the, he tempts the townspeople, different things, how human nature works. And it is absolutely, it's just a wonderful. And I know when he wrote that because Mark Twain took a turn for the, the, the dark because you know who he was friends with towards the, the later years of his life? Nikola Tesla. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> and I'll I'll send you a picture of him and it was one of the only pictures of him and Tesla together. And oh. and it's like, yeah, it was really cool. Albert Einstein also was a new Nikola Tesla. They they also went to certain things, but it yeah, mysterious stranger. Oh, Mark, I, I 100% we we can talk for hours and we we we, we will skip branches as a squirrel, but we still have something to talk about. 100%. Okay. Cool. Um, but because you uh we we want to wrap it up. That's What's right, your right. favorite booze or beverage drinks okay um the, the my favorite beverage would be a um bloody mary i don't know what they call them i think it's called the, oh crap they call them something no, different. bloody mary if you go to estonia yeah go to the swiss hotel yeah there's a swiss hotel in estonia there are two like they 
they are like the twin towers. Yeah. One is the office building and one is a hotel, the yeah. Swiss hotel. There's on the 15th floor, there's a Davidoff suite. In a Davidoff suite in a hotel, you can smoke Davidoff cigars. Nice. Or they're there at that bar, a Bloody Mary, and you will be astonished. That cool. was my best Bloody Mary ever. Yeah. Period. I, it, the, and, and what I love about it is it can, you could make them really plain and really boring, or you can make them so elaborate. And and it really the, the best ones have this wonderful combination of of, of ingredients in them. Um, I've made a bunch over the years, but yeah, Bloody Mary, no question. Okay, what's your favorite food? I don't think I have one. Um, if I if I had to eat, if, okay, if I had to live on a desert island for a year and only eat one food, it'd probably be some sort of pizza, because you could mm. do so many different things with pizza. Oh so, yeah, that's, um, that's very diverse. Th that's yeah. about it. Yeah. So, how, however, if it was a last meal, if I was on death row, um, ice cream. Ooh. Yeah. What kind of clothing you wear uh, the most, or, or what's your favorite? Oh, I'm I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> I'm wearing uh, a pair of um, uh, Dockers and a Calvin Klein breathable shirt. That that mm. is my favorite color. I've I've got a bunch of different pairs like this. I'll steal from Albert Einstein because at one point, you know, he stopped wearing different clothes. He bought like 30 sets of the same suit. And they asked him why. It's like it's that way I don't have to make a decision when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Just put oh, it on. That's a great one. I'm and, I'm and your hat, of course. And well, yeah, I I've got various hats. Sometimes I don't wear a hat. That doesn't really make I but I've got a bunch of different hats. But yeah, for me, um, it's more of a uniform than anything else. I changed mm. over to this. Oof, at least five six years ago this is pretty much what i wear so there you okay, go okay cool yeah um what's your favorite holiday de destination holiday destination Pla favorite place i've ever traveled to yeah uh, you can pick whatever you want oh uh, probably auckland new zealand uh auckland was one of those i did not realize what a green city was when i went there you know where there's no trash on the ground right people pick up everything there's no clutter anywhere it was like it's almost like a video game city in a way, you know, where you mm. walk around video games and everything just so pristine and, and nice. No, Auckland, New Zealand. If if I if if the United States was wiped out and I was transported in some sort of emergency jet, I'd go take me to freaking Auckland. Even though they <laughs> okay. drive on the other side of the road and it'd probably crash me. So, oh yeah, that's because you drive on the left side. Yeah, we, right? we yeah we drive on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, yeah, it depends on how what's your perspective on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite quote, uh, Mark? uh treat others better than you treat yourself that's it that's wow. that's the message i give for people to going through life which was if you think about it whatever you're going to do now that does not mean that you should just lay down and let let people run over you of course you know you know responding kind but yeah when it comes to daily life i'll never do a malicious thing to anybody else since i got into flat earth because i believe in a creator now i believe that somebody's watching at all times that karma is very real so mm -hmm. yeah treat others better than you treat yourself that's it. Does it, and then that's the side question. Uh, uh, did flat Earth bring you close to the Bible? Absolutely, did. Absolutely, me did. Too, uh, me because too. again, if if this place was built, then there's a creator. Now, does does that mean that that creator is pick your God here, one of the five mm -hmm. major, major religions? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, but whatever whoever built this place at least is one step closer to knowing God's phone number than us. 100%. And, and it's like, and and people over here have said that, that there's been a huge influx of people back into the church in the United States because of Flat Earth, because mm. it took them from 95% to 98%. And that little percentage, it's like, it's like, yeah, I was really kind of stagnant with the church. No, I'm back in now. And I think wow. a lot of people kind of like real quick, kind of like why the, the, the astronauts wouldn't put their hand on the Bible and say they went to the moon. Because once you know then mm. you're rolling the dice. Then you're like, okay, now, you know, you know, you're being watched. You still going to lie. Yeah. You still going to yeah. make that big lie, which is why the, I mean, seriously, why would the astronauts treat that Bible? Like it was radioactive. I know why. Cause I wouldn't mm. touch it either. It's like, hell no, I'm not. Exactly. No. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It doesn't make sense. No other way. No. Okay. Last question, Mark. And then we, we perfectly in the two hour schedule. Wow. Okay. What's your life motto? My my personal life motto, other than treat others better than you treat yourself, 
Um, if, if I had to do a second one, which would be learn from mistakes, meaning, and by that, I mean, don't learn just from your mistakes, learn from everyone's mistakes. Don't be the guy like the kids, you, you know, like, like if you ever seen kids that, that put like a coin in a light socket, I don't know if they do those here, right? You see kids, like one kid will do it, right? He'll get shocked. He'll cry kid right next to him. will pick up that same coin <laughs> and put it in the freaking socket. It's like, no. No, learn from that guy. It's like, I there's so many things that I don't do in life because I've watched other people. I mean, go, seriously, go on to YouTube and type in fail army, right? Yeah, I just want to bring it up. <laughs> fail army. Yeah. yeah, fail army. It's like, it's like, <laughs> if it's, you see it, that, you watch enough things like, yep, that's one thing I'm not, never going to do ever. Like, you know, like, buy oh, when a you do something, never sorry, gonna... when you do something stupid and somebody says, wait, I'm going to record it, don't. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, don't because you're, you're no, going to fail one hundred percent. You're going to be on YouTube, and it and it helps. It has helped me. It has helped me my entire life. I've learned from not again, not just the things I've done. I observe a lot of stuff. I absorb as much of the world as I can, both the good and the bad. And yeah, I will. I will look for the patterns, which is I look for. It's like, oh yeah, it seems like that particular hobby or or profession or whatever it is that is a high risk thing. I don't know mm. if I want, and the and the penalties are horrible. Therefore, I'm not doing it. So, and look, I've got all my my hands and fingers. I'm still I'm still plenty fine. So there you go. Great, great. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for hopping on this uh, podcast on this organized production. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I did. Thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, 100. I'm going to contact you to do another one, and we can we can we script uh, we, we skipped. Uh, branches like a squirrel, as I like to say. But now we have collected some nuts. Okay. And we can we can we can skip the branches, but we go. With, yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to do, do some nuts. You just let me know when, and and uh, I'll be there for you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Have a brilliant for for the listeners. Have a, a brilliant morning, uh, day, or evening, no matter where you are on this beautiful plain planet. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Yeah.